What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest in the building. Listen, this man is a singer, a songwriter, a musician, a producer, an engineer, and so much more. You know we have in the building today? We have Mr. Ed Robinson in the uh-huh. building today. What's going on, Big Boss? My I'm a king. My I'm a day. <laughs> I go and kick it and I watch the old world around, you know it go. <laughs> you understand. Thank yes, you sir. so much for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast today. Thank you for having me, brother. It's all good. All right. On this podcast, we like to go right from the beginning and then basically bring it up right to today. So my first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica and what type of child were you? Ha! <laughs> I'm not sure if I have a description for the kind of child I was, but <laughs> but um, I was born and raised in Spanish Town, Jamaica, 32, 31 St. John's Road, to be exact. Um, to be honest, I, I give I always give three parishes in Jamaica credit for my for my upbeing, for my upbringing. See? Mm-hmm. Spanish Town, St. Catherine, Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, and Farm Heights, Montego Bay. Those three parishes, my bridge, and I, I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without them three parishes. Born and raised, cultured in the streets of Spanish Town, mm-hmm. educated in St. Elizabeth, you know, between Lacovia Secondary, which was a secondary school at the time. Mm-hmm. And um and Santa Cruz as a as a as a town as a city as a community. So how did you even go from mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Spanish town and reach all the way over to Certainly Santa Spain. Cruz? <laughs> 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 my parents, my parents. You know, I was born and raised with both parents, mother and father. You know, mm-hmm. by the time we start Spanish town, start get in a little terrible state, a little terrible way. Um getting caught up in the streets because you know how it is mm-hmm. when you're born and raised in a place like spanish stone you cannot be cute so the first thing you have to do is learn how to shoot mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so by the time we start get in a thick of things in our streets you know peer pressure you know try not to be a coward try not to be a punk you know what i mean but by the time we start getting involved with the streets my appearance was like, that's it. You know what I mean? That's it. Time for a fee. Figure out the, the thing as a as a grown as grown man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I was born and raised with eleven brothers and sisters. You know, eleven. Eleven of us. Yeah. You know, so that's a ten brother and sister. Myself, like eleven. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um. So my parents was like, my father just get a truck. Mm-hmm. And everybody was packed up in that truck and then the furniture them come afterwards. That means that we couldn't escape. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I have said big up mama father, I have said big up mama um, father father, you know what I mean? So boom, straight to Santa Cruz in St. Elizabeth. And that's where my education starts. Because I'm the kind of person that the minute the minute I start paying something attention, you have my one hundred percent loyalty to it so this was education time so i started pay attention to it i got involved with art with paintings and drawing you know and then at lakova secondary school um school mm-hmm. i got involved in a music program okay you know and the rest is history from there bridge i mean we form a little banning school called the kobe's you know it was lakova secondary school so we call the band the kobe's you know mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And from there, that band become Black Heat, and the Black Heat become um, um, City Heat. You that know turned I mean? into City Heat. That band turned into City Heat, you know. Big so, band. Yeah, man, which was when when I quit that band and the new management buy out the group and everything and went there, so... Mm-hmm. Um, the lead singer for that band was Diana King. Wow. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> so you see the Spanish Town Connection come right back around. Yeah. And just know, by this time, this is Ultra Rios, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. By this time, this is this is Ultra Rios. And then the, the City Heat management buy out this group. And 
they went straight to we went straight to Kingston and become the backing band for but by this time I leave the group. So when I leave the group, there's two people who replace me, the drummer and the lead singer, because in that band I was a drummer mm -hmm. and lead singer. Okay. I was a drummer and the lead singer for the band. As in most bands, you know, that mm -hmm. I was part of, you know? Yeah. All right. So I want to take you back a bit before we really get there. Yeah. Growing up, you went to school and everything. What do you think you were going to get into when you said education? Now, what were you thinking? Did you always think it was going to be music or what was your path you thought you were I never thought it was music. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was art, was painting and drawing and stuff like that. You know, but um, what threw me off from there was I, right after leaving St. Um, um, Lacobia Secondary, I went on to, to set St. Elizabeth Technical High School. Mm -hmm. You know, from there, I got involved serious in the art program, painting and drawing. Big up Mr. Linton. Big up Mr. Linton every time. See? Mm -hmm. um, got involved with it to the point where I got actually got Mr. Manley, Mr. Michael Manley. People might not remember who that is, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it was the president, prime minister of Jamaica at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, gave me a scholarship to go to Jamaica School of Art. Okay. You know, went up there, and I mean, it was not was not scholarship that was that was going to cover everything. So by the mm -hmm. time I get there, I realize I'm going to get a place to stay and all them things. And my parents couldn't afford that, so I just mm -hmm. quit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just went directly into music full time. I mean, my first my um June 14 coming. I think it's going to be 44 <laughs> years since wow. I got paid professionally to, to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Got paid seventy-five dollar. Never see them kind of money in my life. Not even my parents. Me never see with them kind of money. There. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I, mean? so I got seventy-five dollar for do that show in um in a little town called Mountainside in Saint Elizabeth. So was, it was you, you as the band at backing up some other I, singers, or was right? You I was backing up a lady in him. I was backing up a lady in Lana Bennett. You know the show. Lana Bennett was the star for that show. So we were back in her. You know, it was just us and her and probably a, a few little locals. You know how it go. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, I got paid that night. The next day, I probably shopped for about five days <laughs> 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 with my $75. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, right after that bridging, I couldn't, I couldn't look at any other career. I, could, I just stopped art, stopped drawing. Everything and just go, like I said before, you know, anything I dedicate myself to. So it was street foolishness back in Spanish town, 100% I'm part of the gang, you know what I mean? If it's a band, 100% I'm part of the gang, you know what I mean? So it's, I have the kind of w weird warp mentality there. The laser focus, where yeah, you're focusing like, on something. I'm, I'm like this. You ever see them donkey drill back in Spanish mm -hmm. town, where you have the, the horse, them have this thing, the donkey, <laughs> them have this thing, right? So, them mm -hmm. can't even see them bridging with them, I help draw the drill with, you know what I'm saying? So, them just focus, tunnel vision, pew, straight, right you know? There. And we are talking about 44 years later. That's you know, crazy. I am doing the exact same thing, Bridget. That's never, and I never have. differ, never stray, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apart from, you know, getting involved with the quote-unquote business side of the, of the, of the thing. We're going to get there because somebody like you, I definitely mm -hmm. want to talk to you about that part there. Mm -hmm. But even this now, how do you discover your voice? And even on top of that, how did you discover what instrument you wanted to play at that time there? All right. I was playing drums at the time because the drum, the drum always seemed to be the the attention grabber. <laughs> you, you know, it's like you watch a band, the keyboard player probably stand up over there doing thing. Yeah, great keyboard player, I would love him, but there's not much to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of him flamboyancy and him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bass player, yeah. Well, ex except for a bass player where I, that I've met and it's my bona fide virgin right now named Derek Barnett. You know what I'm saying? We're about, we're going to, that name is going to come up again in this conversation. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, he, he make everybody want to be bass player. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of, the flamboyancy, they just mm -hmm. adore it. You know what I mean? But while me playing drum, 
while while I watch other drummers, you know, because I mean, you know, you've been around the you've been around the block, you know. We've been to the festivals, you know, this mm-hmm. you know the Santa Cruz festivals, you know, the theater. We see drummers, you know, but them just sit there and holding the tempo, boring. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Can't play. Don't get me wrong, but them boring. There's like, there's nothing to there's nothing to to see here. You just feel like move on. Yeah. You know. So that was my thing, and then I got I got involved with. I got involved with watching, um, what you call it now, TV. Mm-hmm. And you start to see, you start to see um, the live show them in a black and white, because back in them days was black and white TV. <laughs> 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 you know, everything black and white. And I started going to the libraries mm-hmm. and I start seeing magazines. You know, you, like, what, you know, you go to the library and find a magazine and you, and you rip out the page with you know, with the drum set or with the drummer. And it's like, you, what what you see in there is like, whoa, look for a drum set, yeah, man. Because some of the drum set that I was playing back in them days, I made it. You made it? Yeah, yeah, man. Some of them I made it. Some of them you get some old drums from mm-hmm. somebody and you replace the, the, the skin with all kind of foolishness. And even the drumstick wasn't real drumsticks. I make them, you know what I'm saying? You sit down every day with your knife and you you know what I mean? You shape out, you look at drumstick, and all them things. Mm-hmm. You know, so everything was was like, we to call it industrious. You know, you, you you do your thing and because you focus on doing this thing. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That's why I think with us as Jamaicans, you know, we we were forced to be focused when it comes to getting getting things done. We were forced. And it doesn't matter what we choose to do. If our badness, mm-hmm. we focus on it. You know, if our street foolishness, we focus on it so much that we all tell upon ourselves more time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you, know, that yeah. you know, so it's, it's, it's part of the journey of the Virgin. You know, just, just that, just that, the tunnel vision thing, you just focus on that until you reach the level where you decide that, all right, I I want to be the singer. I want to be up front. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be. I don't want to be in the background anymore because it's like the background become become like a small cage to you now. Mm-hmm. You know, so we start doing the from from behind the drum. I was doing the vocal thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but I noticed that the people them up front were more like the focus of the thing. You know. So I ride that way because when it comes to being the being in the spotlight as far as a performer is concerned, mm-hmm. I consider myself a performer first before I consider myself a musician. Okay. You know, so I want to be right where that, that singer is. I want to, right after I come off a stage, I'm supposed to be in the spotlight. Yeah. But I couldn't because, you know, I was playing drums. Mm-hmm. You know, some start focus on, you know, becoming a lead singer, becoming a singer, becoming a singer. Mm-hmm. It started out for me in um in Ocho Rios at a club called Little Pub. You know, big up Mr. Keith Foot, big up every time, King Man. He was the first person who heard me on drum singing and decided that I'm gonna take them to the studio in Kingston and record. Okay. Record. So that's where I, first time I ever record was with, you know, was was there. We did a song with the band, went to Kingston and we did all of that. <laughs> and I, I spent a little time, not a little time, a lot of time in Ocho Rios mm-hmm. as, as far as my career as a drummer and a singer is concerned. Big up Carl Young, you know, from from Irie FM. Irie FM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll record it. I call you. First person who ever buy me a drum machine. Okay. First time ever I ever own a drum machine, Mr. Carl Young. Mm-hmm. I like a guy come around selling it. You know, you know how that is. And it was like, you want, yeah, drum it. This guy asked a little machine. I haven't, I've never seen a drum machine before. You know, and him just say, yo, you 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 want it? You like it? I um, plug it in and check it. Out. I was like, whoa. You see, I can't do that. And he was like, all right, cool. Take it. Are yours. That uh, when a Christmas. Are your Christmas gift that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I have to say, big up, you know, Mr. Carl Young every time for that. So from there, 
got interested in drum machine, got interested in production, start doing my little production by my cassette them, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. And not the rest, the rest is just from a bridge, in, you know. What I mean, all right, so you're doing this stuff. You said you were you did some work with over with Carl Young, too. Was mm-hmm. Barry here over there when you were there, too? No, Barry, you're probably never even born yet. Wow, you know, Barry, Barry, oh, here I met Barry here one day in the studio. I went to when I got um, when I when I went to Kingston as a singer. Mm-hmm. Start working with basically everybody, you know, the new name music, you know, the Gossy Clark, start working with the Mikey Bennett, mm-hmm. who I actually learned like basically everything I learned from Mikey Bennett when it comes to production. You know, mm-hmm. I'm producing vocal, producing music is Mikey Bennett. I learn everything. I will sit there and watch him work and mm-hmm. learn everything and emulate him, everything, you know what I mean? Emulate his style of production and blah, blah, blah. But when I got involved with Tough Gang, you know, bridge name Royal Thompson, mm. we did a song. I did the song in, in uh, Montego Bay because I used to live in Montego Bay at the time. By this, I, you know, start doing some, some, some work in Montego Bay in terms of live work on the beach at Carnival Beach. Okay. You know, regular, every night, you know, like yeah. a five night a week thing as a lead singer, mm-hmm. you know, and traveling back and forth to Kingston. You know, Panda Bus, believe it or not. Them used to have a thing at Jamaica and a mini bus. Me none of them still have it, though. <laughs> 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 yeah. Not big bus, not taxi, no, mini bus. Mini. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to stand up at the door from Mobile to watch you. So you get a seat when everybody come off a watch you and I go a town, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. So, Came back to Ocherius after a couple of years of leaving Ocherius, after leaving the hotel scene now, and went to Groove Music, which I actually helped build as a youth. You know, okay. I, yeah, man, them times there was no radio station, no IRFM, no nothing like that. We just have a, it was a recording studio that, that, that uh, Mr. Young built, mm-hmm. you know, and give it to, give it to um, Bubbles them and Merit them, you know. And and um and Mikey Spice, Mikey Spice was part of that click. He was part of the original original the original man up there. So he used to play guitar in the band. Him and Bob Bob Clark, you know, who is mm-hmm. the manager of IRFM mm-hmm. right now. You know, so we we got through that. You know, I went through all of that. My virgin helped produce Hammer and Neil and mm-hmm. cut this and chop down Bush Road with a bill the IRFM thing. Pick up to Mr. Carl Young again, you know. So we do all of that. We got through all of that, mm-hmm. you know. And um, by the time we finish that now and get ready for, for start doing me, start doing my solo thing. I mean, I was recording before, don't get me wrong, but never in the major leagues. We were recording, we was doing the corner league thing. We never in the you know, the major league, no, I had for World Cup, you know. Because at this time here, I think you, do you record for a couple of um, labels from Montego Bay at this time? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But uh, as, I'm, as I'm about to have fun, no. Mm-hmm. Um, I started recording for the Montego Bay labels um, way after that. Way after. Way after that. Yeah, mm-hmm. way after that. I mean, you know, we do a little, our little thing because I was doing my thing. I have a studio in Montego Bay. I was the first artist i wouldn't say the first studio because there was a studio in irwin with a bridge called stammerhart in irwin in tucker mm-hmm. you know that i used to go to and i learned some of my studio chops up there playing live drums in the studio you know i learned the engineering thing i learned you know the production thing a lot of things i learned from that mm-hmm. stammerhart and big up yourself in a way there my brother you know um but from there when I met Barrio here as a little youth in the studio the first time, I was doing a song. I was remaking a song called mm-hmm. Knocking on Heaven's Door. You know, Barry O'Hare was the engineer slash producer on that on that record. Yeah. You know, because you know how Jamaica is. Mm-hmm. Is is a guy who spend the money or the guy who own the studio or the guy who who, 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 who are actually, you know, finance the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Are the guy who manage you? I am, I am named producer after that. And when when the song I do, him probably there Timbuktu 
with them girl or him up on the beach I eat, you know, dumpling mm-hmm. and whatever. You know what I mean? But him not then nowhere near the studio when the record come out, you see. Yaddy, 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 Ed Robinson produced by the same guy who never died a studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Barry Hoyer was this producer on that record. You know, rest him soul. You know, and with, that, with all of that, my brethren, and the, the record come out and I hate the record. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay, you know what? Hold on. Hold on that for one second before we even go there because I know you had done did the work for with pet um pentos and stuff like come before or after? No, way afterwards. All way, of that was after. Hey, way, way after. What probably to about 10, 10, 12 years after. No, okay, so when do you record how many times did you record knocking on heaven's door? Two. Two I times. did it at my studio at first in Montego Bay with Stanley Chin, Big Up Yourself, my king. You know, I did it there. And we, I, I, I had a small studio, an eight track studio. Mm-hmm. So we needed more instrument. And the way I used to record them time, there was like, you know, you try to record as much as possible, but we only have eight tracks, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. So we couldn't, there's not much we could have done there. So when, when that's how tough gang hear the record, that's how real them hear the record, mm. you know, because we played for them from from my studio, and mm-hmm. it was like, yo, wicked, but we have to go remake them thing because we want the sonic boom, we want the sonic thing, you know. Everybody we used to talk about sonics back in them days, you know what I mean? Because you know we have the small studio thing and the small board, but we want the big board and the, and the mm-hmm. twenty four track reader, you know. Mm-hmm. So we carried that whole idea straight to. To Grove, mm-hmm. you know, and and Barrio here is the mastermind behind all of that. So if you didn't like this song, why did you record this song and even take it to somebody else to listen to it in the first place? All right. No, I like my version when I did it in Montego Bay, and I like the way it, it was, right? Mm-hmm. But getting with these professional people now, <laughs> getting with the Barrio years, Getting with the with the Mr. Ruel Thompson, you know, getting with um with with Steve Stephen Stephen Stewart, who played a solo, the piano solo. These are mega professional people, right? The people who do them thing and I make hit records every day, right? So them know they know how to craft the sound, they know how to to, to polish it up and make it become the record that they was hearing in their head. Because you have to remember that producers hear things that you do, you don't. As a singer, what we're hearing is fame. What we're seeing is fame. You know, we don't see, we don't see longevity. We don't see quality. We don't see, we don't, we don't see them things. As, as a matter of fact, I don't know about nobody else, but let me not talk for people. I never look on it like that. Got you. I wasn't looking at, at it like, this song I can outlive every little five week hit, hit song that we are hearing. This song I can outlive. This song I come like it in the category with the Dennis Browns and the Bob Marley and the Antonellis them. Never think like that. This was the thriller load of girl years. Mm. You know, this was the 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 hot this year years. You know what I mean? We are talking about every two week. Mm-hmm. It's a different gra- guy and him grandmother are on the charts. <laughs> you understand me? Mm-hmm. So I want to be part of that because that is fame. Mm-hmm. That is that is you getting a call for come do sun splash. That is you getting a call for come come do you know the big festival them. You know mm-hmm. that is you getting a call for come at the visa office. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That is what we see as young as young upcoming artists. That is what we are looking because we are looking. We are looking on the progressive side of money. Mm-hmm. We are looking on the we are looking on the industry. You know, we are not seeing the business. You know, we are seeing the industry. Mm-hmm. So, get involved with all of that. I did three songs with with, with the brethren, mm-hmm. right? Love the other two songs. The, the other two songs were basically dancehall style. Mm-hmm. You know. This one is more of a classic reggae song. Going back to the office in Tough Gang and listen to it, this is the song this Bridging decided to put out. Hmm. 
knocking on heaven door. Furious. <laughs> I, I was so furious to the point where I stopped talking to him. Put it this way. I just now have no more for doing him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I let, me, let me put it this way. The only reason why I never try and bad him up. Mm-hmm. He is a bigger bad gun man than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about this is a bridging, this is a, this is an army brat, this is an army man, you know what I'm saying? At night time, you see them man with them big arm and them put on them reserve soldier thing and them gone on the road gone patrol. That's the only reason why I never try and bad them up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because if you had your weight, you would have put out the dance hall first. Exactly. And this thing I would have put out them little five-week hit tune there. Mm-hmm. And that was it for me, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we want an instant hit. That That's where our mentality was. You know, we want a, we want a tune where I run the IRFM charts. We are look for a tune where I run, you know, the guy on the tr- street charts. We are look for street cred. Mm-hmm. You know, when I look for the business cred, cred mm-hmm. thing. you know, we're not ready for that yet. Our, our mindset wasn't there, even though we were working towards that. But our mindset wasn't there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, vex, 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 vex. So that's when I start moving on now. That song, that record hit, was a number one record in Guyana and New York. Three solid years, like to the date. If him record it the 1st of January, mm-hmm. three years later on about the 1st, 2nd, 3rd of January, may I get the news, may I get the phone call, yo, listen this, yeah. and then put the phone at the, at, at the radio. Right, and I'm like, yeah, what that? I'm saying, no, your tune. I'm going say, yeah, man, how are you going? Yeah, man, that tune I'm doing for about three years ago, man. I knocked it down. I'm saying, man, my youth, how are you talking about? I'm no, the number one tune in Guyana right now. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to like, mm-hmm. what? Mm-hmm. That was the beginning of what I was looking for mm-hmm. in terms of fame. So what were you doing in between the recording that song to get into that to that point there uh, actually I, st- <laughs> I i went back to street mode mm-hmm. but not upon the eyeglass rest tip not upon the hanging out carnival eye tip mm-hmm. it was on bigger scales than that right in between the so i start building houses i start building my house so yeah, it was from the streets. Mm-hmm. It was no music thing. It was from the streets, but not, like I said, you know, if you understand, mm-hmm. not the carnival boy mode thing. Mm-hmm. Not the, hey, boy, blah, 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 mm-hmm. on the carnival. Not a time for that. Them, them thing, they're a one-way trip to two places when I write. Mm-hmm. You know, you either go and feed worms, you know, or you go and feed big perm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's easy as that. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're not play that. We're not play them that role with no guy, you know. So we were doing solid two, three to four years worth of them kind of vibe there for getting involved in a for lift yourself up. Because by this now we start to realize how the business of music was. Okay. You know, this is one business you can't come in a, and expect the business to pay you attention mm-hmm. you have to pay the business attention nobody pay you attention in this business unless unless you make mega money mm-hmm. or, unless them are make mega money off of you that's when them hug you up and buy you the cars and buy you the apartment and buy mm-hmm. you the jewelry and treat you like betty you know what i mean because you're the kept broad Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was, nobody could do that to me. I mean, I've had them kind of offers. Don't get me wrong. I've had them kind of offer probably about 10, 12 times. Mm-hmm. But I'm nobody's Betty. You can't keep me. You can't buy me a car and keep me in an apartment and call me for come record every weekend. My you chuck off, mm-hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Depend on mm-hmm. that with the man. You know, so we never really go that route there. Mm-hmm. So that's why we wasn't, you didn't hear the name Carlin every day. You never hear the name of Carl on radio. 
every now and then, yeah, them play a one show. And when I got involved with, you know, the, 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 the not the heavy dancer, but the subtle dancer, when I got involved with the penthouse records, when I got involved with the, with the, um, with the, with the, Shocking vibes. Shocking vibes. When mm -hmm. I got involved with all of those labels, that's when you hear my name start calling on. You hear not, it's not even too much of my name. You hear the record them start playing on radio mm -hmm. because I was a part of that, what they call in Jamaica, the juggling at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they probably still call it that. But once a rhythm going down and you sing on that rhythm, you know, you get played amongst the, amongst the, the, the big boys. Mm -hmm. Right, but the minute the big boy sang dead, you're one automatically dead. Hmm. You know, figure that out real fast. I think I figured that out from about top ranking them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so by this time, I was like, nah, nah I'm, I'm not going to play that game. That's why if you listen, if you go back and do the research, you don't hear me running around with too much of the Punani rhythm man, this a rhythm and that a rhythm. You won't hear me running with no juggle by juggling. You had you had like a dance hall vibe, yes, but you weren't recording for every single promoter, yeah. um, producer doing every single thing. Yeah, because I was nobody's kept baby. Yeah, I was nobody's boy. I was nobody's artist. I was nobody's virgin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not depend that. Mm -hmm. I'm not depend that because I realized what it was about. It was about. The juggling, the hustling, you know, the, it was, that, that's what it was about. And I was doing my thing, you know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't sitting down depending on a guy for, you know, I, me need, me need, a, me need a, 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 a curtain for my window, I mean, I depend on a guy for carry it for me if I'm firing her. Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't depend on that with nobody, my brother. So my mentality was a little bit different, mm -hmm. you know, from the average beer that I knew because most of the, most of the dude them that I know I was running with was was sitting around hanging around for a guy from firing for financing thing. Hmm. You know what I mean? So you know, no disrespect to them. A man have to do him have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but it wasn't my thing. That wasn't your thing. Dude. No, it wasn't my thing. I couldn't so, I, I couldn't play that role there. Even before we go full fledged into the knocking on heaven door scenario and all that, mm -hmm. top ranking days here now. How did you even get to top ranking? Top ranking was a mobile virgin. I have, have a record store in the middle of Montego Bay in a Sam Sharp Square. Mm -hmm. And that's where I used to go. And because I'm a, from back in the time, I'm a vicious record collector. Okay. My record collection is at this stage of my life. If I show it, you probably weep. You probably yeah. cry. You know what I mean? My record collection from Jamaica to foreign. Everywhere I go in the world, I come back with at least 15 to 10 albums. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter the, the, the genre of music. I listen, I'm a vicious listener when it For comes sure. to music. So that's where I used to go and buy all of my records, you know. And by this time, I have a studio in Montego Bay that I was recording basically everybody from the Johnny Osborne to the Ninja Man to mm -hmm. the this one to the that one. Call me Danny Dredd and 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 and, and Courtney Courtney Melody. Melody. Yeah, all of them bridge in there. I was recording as them dropping a month ago. Be we record them, you know. I was recording them for a bridge in name, um, Rocker's Master. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was recording the pump, um, Sonny Pants, Mr. Pants from Pants and Sonny, mm -hmm. you know, Papa Richie, you, you know, we were recording all of them songs we hear. Where, 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 where you hear with all of them bridging the back in the days for Montego Bay. Mm -hmm. Those are all my underwear. Okay, because yeah. even on that same label, I know you have two songs that I found on that label there. One mm -hmm. of them was with a lady named Yvette Grant. If, no, that was even Montego Bay label. That was the, the label that, that actually put out knocking on heaven door. That was the bridging um, Royal Thompson, Tough Gang. Mm -hmm. Even Grant didn't even know Rackers Master. She never even come Montego Bay. I think she yeah. come Montego Bay for Sunsplash and that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can never find that lady again. <laughs> a bad singer. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. But that's that's basically how we got through it, my virgin. I mean, we got through it silently and violently, put it out mm -hmm. there. You know, we got through it really, really serious. I mean, we never we never ease up for not even for not even a week. Mm -hmm. 
you know, don't get me wrong, I stopped and I've ducked out, you know. Mm -hmm. With all of that saying, with all of that going on, we head out to we head out to um to Man to Kingston from mm -hmm. Montego Bay with me after recording everybody and becoming I, I was I was more known as a producer and a studio owner than I was an artist. Mm -hmm. Even though me have thrown a mash up everywhere else in the world except for Jamaica. You know, because we realize not knocking it, not kicking it, not putting it putting it down because everybody have to eat, everybody have to survive, everybody have to pay their bills. So mm -hmm. people do what they have to do. You know? So when I realized that was what really going on in the music business, the music industry mm -hmm. of Jamaica or the music circle. You know, we, we think twice about it. Mm -hmm. You know, because for be an artist, you probably have to have it the other way around. And I like you can be a look a poor ghetto youth that try to survive and mm -hmm. become an artist and become big. You know, you probably have to become big, stop your door, and then become an artist. Yeah. You know, it's backwards. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> Couldn't couldn't get involved with that with the melee and them drama. They couldn't get involved with it. So I got involved with a move from from the tough gang rural situation mm -hmm. to a lady named Sharon Burke. Mm -hmm. Solid, solid agency. Mm -hmm. So start that company, and I was the first artist there. We actually we actually start that company in our living room. What? See, the office was a dining table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is my this is my first venture now into business. Mm -hmm. You know, watching Sharon Burt do it because Sharon has never done manage artists before. Sharon was more like a road manager. That's what I was going to ask. How for you guys so, even connected? So, right for Sunsplash, mm -hmm. some drama, some drama. Uh, you know, she was running with Royal Thompson at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met her, you know, and real times, me and real times couldn't see eye to eye on a few things. I had a studio in real Thompson's office on Waterloo Road in Kingston. Okay. And I do a thing up there, but real was more dedicated to other things and his business and blah, blah, blah. By this time, I think him start get disillusioned with the music industry, the music business, mm -hmm. you know, so I wasn't, I wasn't getting that kind of, you know, when, as an artist, you want the attention the, with your career for do things. And he wasn't doing that. That's something that I feel like, well, so Sharon Burke make a suggestion. And I was like, mm, cool. You know, and I know Sharon Burke was involved with the music mm -hmm. big times in terms of Sunsplash thing, you know, because that's who I see run run with the Aswad and the Maxi Priest and all them big people that when them come at Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, hmm, she looked like she in the, she, she up on the inn, you know, she up on the inside of the industry, the business. So, you know, Sharon was heavy in the industry. Mm -hmm. So when the idea come up about Solid Agents, she started, our, you know, our own booking agency. It wasn't even a management agency, it mm -hmm. was a booking agency. I made Sharon into a manager because I was the first artist she start managing. So I, I'm instrumental for that. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can call that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then from there, we start the solid digits thing. I'm back and forth to Mantico B, blah, 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 blah. Things are going good. It's a step up. I, I come back to Kingston like every other day, every other week, you know, fly, flying back and forth, trans Jamaica, big up on the damn self. <laughs> 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 you know. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, no bridging, I start seeing round by that little office. We were right in front of the prime minister's house, right? At, Prime Minister also the right, so there's a little lane and we are the end of the block, you know what I mean? Okay. That's where we used to do, you know, all of them thing there, you know? Mm -hmm. And great times, Bridget. Love it. Great, 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 great times. See? And that's where I start recording for the, I start meeting the, you know, the, 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 the solid, the, what them call, what they label them, you know, the big penthouse, them, and Jeremy, mm -hmm. and, Jeremy and, and the Bujabantan and Tony Rebel, which happened to be a cousin of mine. We found out, yeah, 
Tony yeah. Rebel. Yeah, man. Big up your damn self, Mr. Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so put it this way, King Man. One, once you start doing that, things just look on the up and up. Mm -hmm. I was the only artist around by Sharon Burke camp. No other artist was there. Sharon Burke thing go from zero to a hundred in probably three seconds. Mm. We talk about how fast this thing get up. One day I come from, I come in from Montego Bay. She actually come pick me up at the, at the, at the Tim's up in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and she start giving me the good news. Mm -hmm. Now we're the manager and the controlling agent for Michael Rose, Papa San, Cockatee. You, you name them. Mm -hmm. See, you name them. We probably have about 10 artists in one go. Solid, solid move. Mm -hmm. So now, back in them days, it was a package deal. And what really get to me in that situation was we start doing, we start doing, you can't get Michael Rose and, unless you imply mm. Coco T, unless you imply Ed Robinson. I mean, yeah, me probably I get the lowest people and them things. You know, <laughs> me nobody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was a joy for me to do that because me, me I run with the sharks now. Me I run with the big wheel them now, you know what I'm saying? So the little shrimp, they then I move, you know? But it start, it start becoming a situation where me I see sure happen. Big shows happening, big tours happening. Mm -hmm. And I am nowhere near, the, I'm nowhere on it. Mm. And I'm like, wait, what are going on? I mean, uh, and we are talking about for a long time, for probably about a year and a half, two years. Okay. Yeah, when I, I'm not getting any kind of, any kind of work. Hmm. And I was like, whoa, what are going on? But by this time, but all of this time, I still have put out record now. I don't like me ease up, you know. Well, we put out record, we start put out the far road, boy, you this, better not miss, you know what I mean? All them songs, you know oh, what I mean? Man. So don't don't skip that too fast, you know, but <laughs> don't skip that too fast because that's See? one of those hits right. where I think a lot of people, for some strange reason, does mm -hmm. not realize that's you, you know, boss. A lot of songs people don't know is me because see I never really get myself caught up in a in a circle. I never get myself caught up in a box, put it that way there. Where as you hear a guy, you that's I know who that is. As you no, because my music, my taste for music and my taste for songs are so vast, mm -hmm. it's so different that uh, people mistake me sometimes for Aini. You took the words completely yeah. out of my mouth. Red Rose, it, well, Ed Robinson, all has that same voice. Sometimes you could give them that Dennis so, Brown type of song. Sometimes, sometimes. It for me personally, it depends on the, on, on the vibe of the rhythm. Because, you know, most of the time back then, the rhythm track was recorded before you even, before you even come up with the song. For so sure. you can probably have a song in your head, but a man give a rhythm and you go like, hmm, this sound like you can fit on that. But I couldn't sing, I couldn't sing if a rude boy had this like how I sing, you know, um, um, oh baby, baby, I love you. You know what I mean? I couldn't sing it in that style. Okay, it not fit. You see, that's the difference between me and enough artists where the man they sing every subject the same way. Most of these artists sing, if they must sing, I love you, baby. You know, if they must sing, how could I sing if I, I, I'm rude boy or bad boy or whatever, as like how I sing Secret Garden with me and Dennis Brown and Richie Steele. We're getting there too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to that song here too. You know what I, mean? I couldn't sing it the same way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Secret Garden is like a love song. Mm -hmm. you Let's know get I mean? out of this thing there. Mm -hmm. The Watch Your Flex, it came out twice on Penthouse and it had two different names one with Bujo and one yeah. by yourself. Watch what, Your Flex was one. And what you, what was Your Flex was not, was not planned out, a planned out recording. Watch mm -hmm. Yourself was a manufactured recording. That was, 
that it was fa not fabricated. I don't want to use that word, mm -hmm. but it was like I put it this way: Would you hear the song? Um, Pentos, Donovan German, hear the song. Mm -hmm. Right after we done with, I think it was Tony Kelly or Dave Kelly, one of them. I remember which one of them, you know, record it. And after we done record it, you know, I I thought we would have put. I wanted, not thought. I wanted Tony Rebel to be the DJ. Okay. But I would love Tony back in them days. You know, I'm coming with him bad tune and fresh mm -hmm. vegetable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love him. Love them style, but Tony Rebel not into the rude boy thing. Mm. You know, Tony Rebel is a decent upbringing youth. So I don't know how he would have interpret the rude boy gangster tune mm -hmm. that way. You know, so that's that, that wasn't his bag. You know, so um, when me and Donovan Jeremy and decide that he want to use uh, Gargamel, you know, mm -hmm. want to use Mr. Bojo, so. That's what we put on it. And when we hear it, I like it because me always like the kid. Me always pass and see him outside and drink him Guinness and I smoke him spliff and a, a DJ out loud and you know that that was Shaba motif there. You know, so I was like you're that little youth. But them them used to call him Smurf. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. And I said because I know him as Smurf before my I know him as Bojo. And I said, yeah, man, I look at you, the red rose, I show me you, I look at you, the bud, you know. And we, mm -hmm. you know, we used to go pick, drive, go pick him up, or drive around the street, or whatever, and see, man. Love him. Still love Bojo until today. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dope, you know what I mean? You know, but when I put him on it, when I hear the record, I was like, yeah, man, bud, bud. I hear the record when the record was released. I never even hear it before it was released. <laughs> because, see, I wasn't one of them kind of dude that I used to, Go around at the studio every day. Mm -hmm. I just go at the studio work and I'm out because I got business to take care of. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have the time for hang around the studio every day with them. So me hear when the when the song I mix or when them advice it. No, none of that. So when I hear the song, it, to me it was manufactured. It was you know put together. Mm -hmm. You know, one and take one and put take one and boom and then put it together. And I love it. Still love the record. And, and that, that was a right. kind of. That was the kind of record I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I think you had Roughneck in your name at that time there. Roughneck was out there a long, long time. Mr. Mikey been a big up for that one, the Two Friends label, mm -hmm. or, you know, the Philadelphia. You know, um, R <laughs> Roughneck was, was giving me that reputation, you know, that, that vein that I wanted mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. in, into, that, that whole ragamuffin street thing i could relate to that more because i had more experience street wise got you than i had with singing oh baby baby i love you we never really have too much time for the for the playboy bunny thing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh, from where we coming from to the streets of making life was all about roughneck road boys hmm. you know what i'm saying so i could relate to that i could write a song Right away, just sit down and think about how even my one situation we're like, hmm, you see, if you never do that, that wouldn't happen. So, you know, you know what I mean? So, right away, we could have write, we could have write ragamuffin love songs. We could have write ragamuffin rude boy songs. Yeah. Even quicker than we could have write, you know, oh, baby, baby, I love you. Mm -hmm. Because you had a lot of a lot of sound clash songs, those times are all too a lot of sound boy songs. So that's where you could, even if you didn't want to go the real badness yeah. route, you could yeah. get it out in the sound clash type of way. You know. Well, I mean? it's basically the same thing. You just you just change the name of the mm -hmm. of the of the of the, of the parties, but it's basically the same thing. You know, basically mm -hmm. the same thing. You just um instead of putting, you know, dopey dopey killer. You put in, you put in sound boy killer, or you put in, um, or you put in, let's say, stone lover, or you put in black Scorpio, you know what I mean? Instead of saying Barry, 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 Barry X, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I basically the same thing, man. It's basically the same thing. I same thing I tell them, you kill them. <laughs> One hundred percent. You brought it. You brought it up here. Listen, it's secret yeah. guarded. You brought it up. All right. This is the one you recorded for um Castro Brown. Oh, yeah. Then this one is with you, yes, Richie sir. Stevens, Dennis Brown, and a name you brought up earlier, Derek Barnett. Derek, how Barnett, did you guys put that together? Funny story. Mm -hmm. 
went up to the studio after a cat catastrophic is that a word <laughs> a dirty night i have at a concert call a, a concert call crucial concert mm. i was a headliner uh, what headliner i was a performer mm -hmm. uh, who was supposed to be a performer on that concert Two days before the concert, before the show. Now, the show is called Crucial Concert because it's a show about raising money to build a rehabilitation center for Jamaica mm -hmm. for drug users, for, you know, people, alcohol users, rehab, you know. Mm -hmm. Two days before the show, they, somebody called me. I don't know who it was that called. I think it was Sharon Burt that called me. Mm -hmm. And they took me off of the show. And I was one of the biggest feasts mm -hmm. on the poster for the show. <laughs> Even in the middle of the newspaper, I was one of the biggest feasts mm -hmm. on there. And they called me two days before the show and kick me off of the show. They take me off of the show. How come? Watch this. <laughs> Tell you how... It's Jamaica invent Facebook and we don't know. You know. A Jamaica invent, invent Facebook. Trust yeah. me. One day before the show, I came out on the second page. You know, like when you when you buy a newspaper and the first page of a yeah, five, five man kill them brother and sister don't have, you owe you owe and blah blah blah. And then you turn that page, the next page, it was a mm -hmm big picture of me. I swear if I didn't realize it was me, I would have swear that's a crackhead. Them find the worst picture. I don't even know who take that picture. I don't know where them take that picture, Bridget. Look <laughs> like I was doped up on something. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> putting on the paper. And this is the headline. Artist drop from concert cause of illegal drug use or because of um, illicit drug use. Some some crap. And my picture was on that. They mentioned my name nowhere. Yeah. But uh, my picture they on it. And then the uh, next bridge, you know, you know, rest in peace, bridge, him kill himself. Mm -hmm. Saying picture was right beside me. So two of us get kicked off of the show because we were strung out on drugs. And trust me, if I didn't know that guy in the, in the newspaper, mm -hmm. which was me, my picture, if I didn't know who that was, I would have swear to you that, yo, that brother there, dope up bad, man. That brother is, is, is I know, I know coke in my door, man, a hero in my door, junkie that. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did they even come up with this to say? Virgin? With this concept. We're talking about 30-something years later, I have no idea. Don't ask me to explain that one. All I know, I start making the rounds in Kingston, you know, mm -hmm. get into, can't get to the promoter because the promoter, the man, the, you know, the man, the gatekeeper, the man touchable, the man reachable, you know what I mean? The man, the reggae gatekeepers, you know, mm -hmm. so we can't get to them. Sharon Burke try to get into them and Sharon Burke finally end up with, um, with somebody now nah, I call him name to be honest because I still have respect for the bridge. Mm -hmm. Finally get in touch with him and him say, all right, you what? Know, don't even worry about that. Come on the show. Don't even worry about what they must say. Because I hope people don't read them read that newspaper boy. So I know everybody see it. So you just come on the show. I am going to put you on the show. I'm going to call you up because he was one of the MCs. Okay. I personally go and call you up on the show. Mm -hmm. So I turned up on the show, me and my goons, and, you know, with the backstage. Out of the blue, I hear my name call. Mm -hmm. And him call me on stage. By this time, I didn't know that the band says, the band that was back in the show that was supposed to do my liquor. One song me I do, you know, which was knocking on every door. One tune. Live broadcast on TV. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the one TV station that was down there at the time, the JBC song. Mm -hmm. 
This was live. This was not a tape show. This was live. People are watching it. Everybody glued to them TV. 35,000 people in the National Stadium. Ram show, brother. Because this is a show with a purpose. Mm -hmm. The MC said to me, say, him call me up on the stage. Me, so me I run up there now for go sing. By the time he reached on, right on top of the stage, where everybody could see me walk in, mm -hmm. him start explain why them, see that little youth and all them take him off of the show, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Me I say, whoa, ho. Oh, you tell the people them say you're not going to know about it. You're going to introduce me to the people and make me come sing me one tune and get their laugh, you know? Mm -hmm. So I get stuck because I remember now, you know, I was not very experienced 10,000 people at a show performer. Mm -hmm. This is my biggest show in my life. Mm -hmm. Never seen that kind of crowd before in front of me, but... I'm, I'm a performer, mm -hmm. so the more the merrier, you know, and this is, this is what I dream about. This is what I prepare in my mind about. So I'm ready mm -hmm. for the rock them world. Them times I used to dress like a, like a rock and roller. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think. I don't think anybody that never traveled before ever see a man wearing a cut up jeans. Remember, remember what, what is known now as your, your jeans and ripped mm -hmm. jeans. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody in Jamaica will see anybody that wear ripped jeans and Converse. Right. And hippie looking t-shirt and, 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 <laughs> and Lee jacket. You remember them Lee jacket, the them Lee Bush jacket, not Bush jacket, but the Lee jeans jacket. Mm -hmm. That was what I was wearing. It's, I think it's on his, it's on YouTube somewhere. I don't know. See, and this brother just called me up to the mic and said, "I want you, I want you to tell the people if you had, if you had, if you had smoke that thing then, I do, I take that thing then, and just put the mic on my mouth. Feel like a deer in a headlight. Never got through them things before. How do you answer this? How do you answer this? Cause if you say yes, the people them probably boo you. Yeah. If you say no, nobody no believe you. Believe you. <laughs> so I'm stuck for a good probably five, six, ten seconds. I'm stuck. Don't know what to say. You know what come out of my mouth? Hell no. Go watch it, man. Get on YouTube, man. <laughs> right? Wow. You probably not gonna recognize me them time this still. Mm -hmm. See. You probably also say, I probably said, no, nah, man, I hate that, man. You know what I mean? So these are the things I've been through mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, full, full vibes mm -hmm. with our people, our, my industry. You know, where you just find people who just put in a position sometimes for just make some wrong decisions. This is not if you avoid them, in order for us to get rid of them, in order for not get involved with them, because I know exactly what I can do mm -hmm. and get away with it. But you don't want to get involved because you can't go around this world, you know, Jack here, big up your damn self, you will love you and everything. But you can't go around this world stabbing everybody. Mm -hmm. No matter what them do to you, Bridget. You can't go around this world self-defensing yourself, Bridget. Mm -hmm. Mota, you have to take with yourself. So what I did, I take with myself. Mm -hmm. I take myself away from Kingston. I take, my way, I take away myself from all of that. Until one day, Sharon Burke called me and said, we're going to do Sun Splash. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. That was it. That was the beginning of the uphill. When I say uphill, I mean Sun Splash took me from probably the second floor straight to the 15th floor. One time. This, this one time. Me. That elevator that just go fly past the 13th floor, Rasta. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That elevator there, that Sun Splash thing there. So we have to big up to Stranberg still for that, you know, mm -hmm. because that was, a, that was my opportunity for really move from. Just, just come out of that whole mindset that way everything was just going chaotic for me. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just get away from it. The car, 
That situation, yeah, boss. I understand. Anytime I hear an artist get himself in trouble, I understand exactly why I'm getting himself in trouble. You get it. And then that right there, so then this led to you recording the Secret Garden with um Dennis Brown, Richie yeah. Stevens. All right. All right. The day after that concert, the next day, mm-hmm. Richie Stevens called me and said to me, say, yo, fire. Come check me up a new name. I said, which part of name? So I said, I'll go place right at Maxfield Avenue. As a coming out, coming out halfway through there. So just come back on a Maxfield Avenue road and blah, blah, blah. And just, just walk up the street. Because them time they're marking when I don't care and them thing there. You know. We have, we have taxi we drop around the place, but mm-hmm. we don't know no way. But they are giving the, the direction to it. Walk up the street, right on your right. So I'm big mango tree down the front. So one complex, like a, like a shopping plaza. Mm-hmm. See? Just come up, it's gonna come check me. So I'm gonna go check him. I'm gonna go up and go check him. I probably go on too early because I'm here alone. Get up there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna stand up on the I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna lean up on the upon the railing, you know, cause it's upstairs, you know. So we lean up on the railing up there. We see a bridge in a pass, man. But my am riding upon a little bike and <laughs> my walk funny in my, my pass. <laughs> so I'm not mood for yelling about it, I'm not mood for chatting about it, like a rasta man. Mm. You know, so he passed me. And when he passed me, he stopped. Right? Cause obviously, my look at me, my, my spot say, you know, whatever. So he stopped and he not turn around and then reverse him, walk backwards. Because <laughs> 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 the man, the man walk backwards. And he walk, when he walk backwards, Bridget, he come to me, he, he just. Come for our son, so I look straight by me. So I said, Yes, he'll ask. But as I turn around and yell him, I recognize who he was. First, me, I see him in real life. life. See, Mr. Gregory Isaacs. Mm. Rest in peace, King Man. <laughs> he look at him and him go, him start laughing, go, <laughs> God bless. Them find you out. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I want to tell you something. <laughs> I eat Greg Rise up from that day <laughs> for about 10 hours. So, <laughs> 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 uh, Mark, you know, Mark, you know, my brother, what's the irony of all this foolishness? Mm-hmm. What's the irony? Of, what's the joke about all of this foolishness? Mm-hmm. I didn't even smoke. <laughs> I couldn't even smoke weed, my brethren. This is wild. See, every now and then I bought a cigarette, but I was a heavy beer drinker. Got you. Don't get me wrong now. Mm-hmm. I was no damn saint. I mean, you couldn't, you never find a wings on my back and you never yeah. find a hail over my head. Mm-hmm. I wasn't any saint. But I did not take part. I don't drink rum. I don't drink none of that hard stuff. Mm-hmm. Beer, 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 green beer, green beer. Mm-hmm. See, all of my... All of my party, all of my thing, beer. See, you know, and then I burn some matan, yeah. You know what I mean? But I was not every drinker, I was not alcoholic drinker. So I don't know where them get that, that thing from. I don't know where them get that, that whole thing. If I'm all up to two, then I can't figure that out. I can't figure that out. At what stage? Yes. I flex like a crackhead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I say, all right, cool, I'm going to leave all of that alone. Mm-hmm. Gregory just walking on my life and just, when we say, just put the final blow, like, bam, you know, knock me out right there. So I go like, whoa. So this is what I got known for in this industry. Mm-hmm. A crackhead. In a, this little inner circle, yeah, and we all know when a guy start do him like a pelica thing and toss, smoke him like a mm-hmm. him like Willy, Wilbert and thing. We all know how we dog them out. We all know how we treat them. We know how we look at them. Not even not even deal with them personally. We, we see how we look at them like, hmm, waste. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this is what I've become in this little uh, industry. I went in reggae industry. And that was it for me. The good thing is, Richie Steven turned up. Hmm. We went, we was in the studio. Him say my singer tune with Dennis Brown and him want me to meet Dennis Brown because 
Richie Steve man, me go way. That's about way back. Mm-hmm. You know, Richie Steve's first professional record where him drop a street. I'm responsible for it. Richie Steve <laughs> name him company, mm-hmm. Pot of Gold. Mm-hmm. That was a song recorded with me and Richie Steven. The first record I ever do with Richie Stevens. Okay. Mama, she deserves a part to go. That was my recording. We pass it on to a bridge named Byron Murray. Mm-hmm. Saying. In the streets. In, in the street. Them time, them not the industries. And probably he, in he, had another, he had another label back then. But yeah, his man. last one before he passed was he, in the streets. Yeah, yeah, but that 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 come way afterwards. Yeah, long, long, long. Way, 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 way after. What about years afterwards? Industries came. He was in Montego Bay doing. I forget when the label used to name, brother, but mm-hmm. it was in the streets. Mm-hmm. Saying in the streets came about twenty years after the fact. Way afterwards, brother, man. What about generation pass and then yeah. industries come? Mm-hmm. Saying what about I, me and me and Byron Murray, we have done some. You know, mm, weird stuff mm-hmm. in order for him to drop Richie Steve in the street and promote Richie Steve to the point where people start reaching out to Richie Steve like good food. Mm-hmm. But Tabo Byron Murray brought Richie Steve to that level, bring him mm-hmm. to Kingston. Then Richie, then Byron follow Richie Steve into Kingston and start do their thing. And they were a team. They were they were doing them thing until them have them personal foolishness. I don't even know where them have. You know. Both of them try to explain to me where them are, but I don't want to hear it. I have no interest in them. If I remember good, the label was called Lifelong Records. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Back in them days, I'm going to tell you something. Mm-hmm. But people don't know. Back in those days, we used to have a little drink or we used to drink and we have no money in a long life. Mm. <laughs> 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 See it? Whatever one call it, suck, suck. <laughs> yeah, then call it long life, right? Call them freeze it now, bag, and we bite off one end and and and, and eat and drink it at the same time. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah, that's where it come. That's where the vibe come from. Long life, la- life long. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Mm-hmm. And we 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 find devious ways. We find various ways. Me and Mister Byron Murray, we used to work at a bank. Mm-hmm. Right, he was a big boy at a bank one night time. We'll find various ways to finance these records, you know. Because I record these things and give it to them. I used to record and give it to top to I'm um, not top ranking to to to, to Rackers Master. Mm-hmm. Everything that I record, I give it to him because I did not know that there was a business to Side. it. So every time I record these, I do these records. As top as Rackers master come check me every day. That was like his second house. Him leave the record store and come straight to my studio in, in farm in um, Mount Salem. We said at Mount Salem at the time. Okay. And then from Mount Salem, I build a house in Farm Heights. Mm-hmm. You know, we start move up the Farm Heights. You now we go up there, we we'll capture some land and you know build out a house up there and build a studio up there. And that's where it become the final resident, the, the official resident of of Tiff Tam Recording Studio. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what that's all that whole thing start my bridging. So Richie Steven bring bring any everybody from Antigua Bay where him coulda where him coulda you know help out or or or, or bring into the in, into the the, the fall into Kingston, mm-hmm. right? Him, him, him draw you in, you know. So him draw me in for come record the deal with with Dennis Brown because him and Dennis have a tune and him say Mwah, me, come come to the tune. But we end up. We end up doing a totally different tune from what he went up there to do with Dennis Brown. See? Okay. We start doing this this record called Secret Garden, and, and Dennis was like, yo, my youth, are you for sing the first line there, you know? See? So that's how, that's how that record come about. First time you meet Dennis Brown, and Dennis Brown has been one of my heroes. One of my heroes, because Mr. Alton Ellis was my hero. Alton Ellis was the thing there. Yes, sir. Was my hero. Because... Those virgins who set the piece in my head in terms of singing, that, that's, that's dance hall to me. Mm-hmm. That's dance hall to me. First time ever, I ever sneak in a dance hall through a little bamboo fence. The first record that me hear. Mm-hmm. First song that me ever hear. And kick back and DJ pull up on me and say, whoa, I saw them mm-hmm. things I go on. You know what I mean? So 
that's what the history I come from, Virgin. That's a, you know, we've been around the, we've been around those blocks, you know, and that's why a lot of things don't really mean nothing to it because we've seen the changes, we've lived the changes. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the hardest things to really happen is changes. And you and me know that Jamaica Music Farm change every weekend. For sure. Every weekend, Jamaica Music Farm change. There's so much, Jamaica invents so much genre of music that every 10 years, it just got ear wire. Every 10 years, it just got ear. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let me bring you back to to top ranking slash El Paso for one second. Mm. And this is going to even include Richie Stevens again. Richie Stevens and Garnet Silk did a song called Fight Back. Mm. But then you had a song on the same rhythm there too called Never Flip Up. How did you guys come up with that one? My King, I build a track. That was my track. It was your track. I made that track. I made that track from some old recordings, right? Mm -hmm. But we chop it up and do it differently. Mm -hmm. But top ranking, hear it. And again... The notion of, of a country vibe, when you are living at a country, because them tell them be a country, right? Mm-hmm. Which part we come from, which part we live in a be a country. The notion of a man having a student in the country, different from a man having, having a student in Kingston. Nowhere else, you know, just Kingston, not Spanish town, you know, mm-hmm. which is a bigger Kingston than, than Kingston, right? If you have a kid student in Kingston and you have a student in Montego Bay, your studio could be the biggest room, the biggest board, the biggest reel to reel. And a guy have a four track studio in Kingston. Film studio bigger than film. Mm-hmm. Right? So, my studio was considered a little studio in Montego Bay. So, when we do the work in Edison, I would play it for top, people like Top Ranking or those bridging. That's why I had so much respect for Rockers Master because. You know, he recognized that we ha- we on to something here. We have something here. Mm-hmm. Seeing top ranking took it to Kingston and make that da- I think Danny Brown here or somebody below by the track, you know. Cause I, I I introduced the track to him. I gave him the track. My song was the first song on that. Never flip her up on a good thing. No, 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 no. See, I was I had the first song on that on that track mm-hmm. there. See? Richie Steven did a song on it, mm-hmm. the fight back song. Um, again, you know, I think I think Garnet must have the OMA vibe or OMA, you know, a, 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 a hookup or something. Whatever them got you, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. See, and I hear him talk it. And Garnet come in and do that do, do theme part on it, you know what I'm saying? But me and me and Woody pa DJ fall out over that thing. Me and, me and Iry FM DJ fall out over it. Rest him soul, give thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, me and me and DJ from Western Jamaica fall out over that vibe there, because my song was the first song they were playing. Mm. And when Richie Steven come, them top play my one total. And I bung switch. So me have to call a bridge and say, "Yo, road boy, how me I hear you play Richie tune." And you now play my own. Mm-hmm. Me know you, you play my own again. And after about the third call, him get aggravated with me and basically get bright. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Basically get bright. And I, I take it as a, as a, as a get bright thing. Because you know them times we're young and ignorant and full So mm-hmm. we take it as a get bright situation and make the step to, you know. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So the truth is, Bridget. Mm-hmm. We've been there. Yeah. You know, we've been there. We're not, we're not, I would even want, I don't even want to use the word appear pay Jews because you don't know that though. Mm-hmm. Saying, but we've been there and, we're, and we've done that. So, uh, most of it right now is, is a joke. It, it's, it's like I look back on it and I go like, damn. Mm-hmm. If, you, if, you had, if you have one opportunity for redo it, <laughs> you know, what would you redo? None of it. Yeah. Because that's what has you sitting in this beautiful studio right now. Every <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent decision you've ever made yeah. have you sitting there right now. Well, put it this way: this is my B room. This is why. This is my my A room is in New York. My mm-hmm. my my real studio is in New York. I'm in Florida right now in my in, in mm-hmm. this small B room. You know, but well, I, I, I've recognized a long time ago. I figured out mm-hmm. a long time ago that the business is where no matter what you're doing in this industry, no matter what you're doing at this music thing, yeah, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The business is where it's at. <laughs> I I leave from Montego Bay. Was fly, they fly me into California, straight into the heart. I mean, I mean the belly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean the head. <laughs> into the heart of the music industry, of the music business. And I have seen some of the wealthiest executives, we are talking about workers, not just mm-hmm. not just um, singers, mm-hmm. right? And sit down and reason with them and get the insight from them and realize that uh, this thing you know, this thing you know, is not for the artists. Mm-hmm. The artist is the pawn, yeah, that we are as singers, we are, you know, we're important because we provide the material. Mm-hmm. But the minute you finish singing it, you can dead now. Mm-hmm. You can just go drown yourself. You can go commit suicide. You can go, go crash. Go, here's a Lamborghini. Drive it to a, at 150 miles an hour on, on the side street and crash and dead. We as done. long as they have the vocals. As long as they have the product. Mm-hmm. As long as they have, yeah, you're right, the vocals, because they can always remix it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the truth is, I realize that I know, I learn mm-hmm. that the artist thing is cool. It's, 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 it's a cool thing to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the real thing to be is a businessman. Okay, so then this is how we're going to get into the business now. Mm. Tell me how Sunsplash changed everything for you, and that's going to lead to the RCA and all of those stuff that's going to lead into MCA, it. not RCA. MCA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Performing on Sunsplash, did my thing. Yeah, all right, boom, 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 boom. Walk off the stage with the adrenaline there. You know the adrenaline when you walk, when you did a great job, and people are going nuts, and we're talking about sun splash when i talk about a little side show up on the beach you know we are talking mm-hmm. about sun splash mm-hmm. damn near probably 70 80 000 people in that park big huge don't do the show consider that a success walk off coming down the stick you know sun splash is tall right mm-hmm. coming down the little stairs I see a little brother. If him did born four days early, I would be a midget. <laughs> see? <laughs> Anyhow, him did come out of him mother four days early, I would be a midget. A little <laughs> short, brother. All when me, me and him did on the same level, me I look down on it. And then I look up at me and go like, yo, Mr. Uh, Mr. Robinson, great performance. My name is Ernest Singleton. I'm from MCA Records, and we need to talk. I need to sign you. Like, right on the spot. We need to talk right now. I mean, I said, yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Do me a favor, get me a beer. <laughs> I swear to you. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, man, cool. I mean, by this time, no, we are right. We don't need to talk to nobody in terms of no money argument. We are right. You know, we're good. We live lavish, you know. I said, yeah, man, we're good, man. Respect my brother, but do me a favor now. Throw it dry, bad. Get me a beer. Now, let me tell you something. The joke and the irony of it is, he went and get me a box of beer. Mm. A whole box. And then bring it, come and put it on my foot. When we're not the little tent, you know, little backstage tent. Mm-hmm. And him start, him and him goons, them come in, them come in with about four people, four big neck white dude, and they look like security people. They look like bodyguards, you know? And I go like, whoa. And... The rest is history, brethren. That was the guy who signed me to MCA Records probably a month later. That night, mm-hmm. they signed. We didn't sign on right after the show. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But he was like, don't talk to nobody else. I know Sony's here looking for people. I know Yadi Yadi is here. Atlantic is here looking for people. You know, I'm the first one that find you. That's why I come to the backstage right before you come off stairs because I don't want nobody else to find you. Blah 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 blah. One bug bugger. You know how the industry is. You know the talk. Mm-hmm. And a month later, get myself a lawyer. Mr. Kendall Minta, big up yourself. <laughs> you know, was recommended to me. I I found a a lady that night who came to me and started talking to me about the business too, Miss Denise Brown. Mm-hmm. You know, and she became 
one of the a and R's at Warner Brothers. Big top lawyer too, but you know, she she was my lawyer at the time. She became my lawyer afterwards, after Kendall, you know, after me and MCA couldn't see eye to eye. So fast forward two months later, I was flown into California mm -hmm. to deal with my record deal. Because I, I sign in Jamaica now and they fly back everything. The contract come down with side. Me, Barrington Levy signed the same day in the same hotel with the same liar. Okay. Because they signed me, Barrington Levy, Morgan's Heritage, the Dreads. Them time them name the Dreads. They must have named LMS now or something. I don't know. Yes. Which is Morgan's Heritage Little Brothers. Mm -hmm. Seeing, you know, big up Mr. Denry every time. Big brother. But, um, and Steel Pulse. Okay. Five, of us, five of us got signed to that label in the same breath, on mm -hmm. the same, uh, right after the same Sunsplash stage. What year are we talking about here? I don't remember, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember none of them things, man. Them thing they just, it's just like the details I remember about mm -hmm. it, you know, because to be honest with you, it's part of the growing pains. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the... It's part of the, you know, the, 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 the upbringing, you know. It's, it's part of the learning. You, you, you remember everybody who you in a class with at school. You just remember you're at school. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so just them things are some little fragment, fragment of memory. Mm -hmm. I two things about them things. But anyway, we got so boom and get to california we get to california we get to the house we get to the cars we get to the girls we get to the jewelry we get to everything that you get for free mm -hmm. that you have to pay for later <laughs> it's, it's free <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. everything that you have to pay for later you get my brother but we get there mm -hmm. and you start meeting the people who you're supposed to be working with which is your a &R. You know, Miss Allison Gabriel, big up your damn self every time. You get to the people who are supposed to guide you through, the people who are supposed to balance your, 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 your publishing thing, the people who are supposed to take care of your copyright. You get to all of them people. You meet with them and everything, and you settle in, you know? You go pick up your car two days later, you know, and you start meeting the producers, mm -hmm. the people who are supposed to take you in the studio. That wasn't part of my plan. My tough-headed self now, mm -hmm. I got said to the company, look here, you see the people who was dear for me when I was coming up and why I wouldn't get to know me, I would prefer to bring those people in. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't like me is because I don't like some of the children me do. The reason why I don't like me is because I don't like me look at performance. I would prefer to bring in Mr. Mikey Bennett. I would prefer to bring in this the Sly and Robbie because I've I've worked with them them two. Big up Sly. Big up a damn self, Mr. Sly. <laughs> I've worked with those bridgens. I would prefer to bring in the Royal Thompsons. You know, I would prefer to bring in, you know, basically everybody who I've worked with. Fatis. Big up Fatis same way, because I used to work with Fatis too. Mm -hmm. Exterminator label. Yeah, but that he was a label, mm -hmm. never a producer. Mm -hmm. But but him invest a lot of time and effort and money in me. I would prefer to work with Mr. Dean Fraser because Dean Fraser is who used to produce me for Fatis. I okay. don't know if Fatis and the producer. Mm -hmm. You know. So anyway. No. They're not gonna have that. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna have none of my people produce any record on this album. Mm -hmm. So I was like, really? Because I did some work with them. They have work with me that I want on this project. Mm -hmm. So I want them to reach out to them and do on a negotiation. No, that's not how these major company work. Mm -hmm. First of all, they have somebody who is like your image consultant. With them don't plan out your image. My image was the exact look that you see Eric Bonet have. Because the lady who was supposed to be doing me, mm -hmm. she went straight with that image to Eric Bonet, which was, which was the, 
little fancy dreadlocks, mm -hmm. the pretty expensive looking shirt, jewelry, jean, ripped jeans, and barefoot. Because my first video was supposed to be done on the beach, barefoot, mm. right? That little rent a dreads tourist God, fancy you. thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was the that was the the whole motive, the whole idea of me. That that's what them see me as a tropical dread. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a tropical ass, and I'm like, hmm, want to have the wrong guy? Hmm. Want to have the wrong man? Because guess what? Which part me come from? The first guy who made the attempt to tell me what to do in life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how hard head we were, even with a record business company. Okay, we don't have no time for food, no industrial foolishness. You know what I'm saying? So, we don't have the wrong guy. Next time you tell me what to do at the last day, you see me. So, them care me for going to meet this producer. Well, to produce my first hit record, for my first single, start the whole project. Meet the dude at the hotel. You ever, I don't know if this ever am in your life. You ever walk in a place and forgot to meet somebody and when you when you you just look upon them and don't like them. You never see them from <laughs> you never you never you, you don't you don't know them from history, you don't, you don't know them from a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. But you just take one as you walk through the door and see them and them get up for me to you. You just look upon them and your spirit just go like them big bulldog. Eh? That's exactly what I feel about this guy when I see him. Because number one, first of all, him is a white rasta. Mm -hmm. White. I want him to say rasta. I disrespect rasta them with it. Him is a, him is a white dread. He's a white man with dreadlocks. And that's my first. That was my first impression of this guy. Yeah. You fake. Hmm. You don't know nothing about that, that, that way of life there, you know? Don't come to me at that and yes, Rasta. Number one, you don't know if me is a Rastafarian or not. So you don't come to me and address me as that right? dread. No, because you see me you know I'm a wolf. You know, I could be a wolf in some sheep clothing. I don't don't address me like that, dread. Mm -hmm. Just me like a man, huh? address me like no. You know, like me the point your way of life too. So I never like him. So we meet for about three, four hours. I know I don't remember one thing when I say. <laughs> when I walk out of there, mm -hmm. I look on the lady and I say, I don't like that Rasta brother. Mm -hmm. Not working with him. And she's like, Oh my God. You you have to you have to work with him. Blah blah blah. I was like, Nope. I don't want. I don't even want to see him again. If I go in a studio with my mom, I might jack him. You know what I'm saying? I might tab him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be around this guy. Because mm -hmm. my spirit, my spirit does not tell me, say, don't go nowhere in this, this, this cabrera. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's how it start out in terms of the production. Second person I met, we fly to New York to meet him. I work with him. I like him. I love him. Simon Law. This is the bridging. If you research this bridging, you'll realize that this is a bridging who produce. Contrary to what you hear and what you read, this is the Bridgen who produce and write for Soul to Soul. Okay. Seeing Simon Law. And was working with Shante Moore. And was working with, with Soul to Soul. Mm -hmm. Seeing that's who start my production. I start working with them. We did a bunch of songs. You know, eventually they met me fly back to Jamaica and start working with Mikey Bennett. You know, I did two songs with Mikey Bennett, I think two, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. You know, I did I did one or two with 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 um with 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 Sly and Robbie. You know, I did a, I did a duet with Diana King. Okay. You know, so we had we had everything, you know, big up Mr. Noel Jones every time to who be, actually become my manager. You know, yeah man, for a long time Noel was managing me there and we did a bunch of work. But then with all of this said and all of this done, I never present the work to MCA Records. So I did not, and no matter, no, no, no listen when nobody tell you, Bridget, mm -hmm. I did not. Them say record company rob artists, right? 
Nobody ever tell you that an artist robbed the record company. <laughs> <laughs> you will never hear. You yeah. will never hear a guy come out and say the artist that robbed the record company. Mm -hmm. Yes, they gave me money. I got money off of my deal. I got money from my deal. Right? A lot of money too. Mm -hmm. But put it this way. I never give them a red card. And everybody else on the on the on the project, everybody else on that cut on that deal, everybody else on that deal deliver albums, deliver single, and got put out and got this and that. Sin? Mm -hmm. I did not. How come? Because I just decided to argue them nothing. Yeah. And what them they did that injustice to me. Mm -hmm. With all the foolishness with them do that I didn't like. It comes down to the point where I go like, listen, I, I need to be off of this label. And I go like, yeah, you can be off of, the, off of the label. But until we said we we're going to drop you, because I got another deal, another offer, mm -hmm. right in the middle of them and them foolishness, right? I got another offer from Warner Brothers. So in, in, order, in order for them to, to, for me to sign to Warner Brothers, they have to release me, and they wouldn't release me from the label. For sure. So I didn't give them no, no record. <laughs> So it's I keep, a standoff. Exactly. I keep their money and I just leave. I just like, yo, I have nothing more for doing it. No, bye. And I leave and I went back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Chill out. Boom, 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 boom. Warner Brothers deal start coming up. The Warner Brothers deal start coming closer, closer, closer. And so I went back to California, mm -hmm. you know, and start dealing right back in Hollywood. Then start dealing with whatever, you know, take care of the business, take care of the check, take care of it. One of brothers gave me a recording studio, big old recording studio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To start doing my work in. So by this time now, I start doing my own work, you know, mm -hmm. start producing my album and blah, blah, blah. And waiting on, I have to wait out MCA because them have, I signed to them for three years, but them have a one year where them call the option period. Mm -hmm. If a lot of people know about that. Mm -hmm. Right? So I actually was with them for four years. One year for them to decide whether or not they're going to sign me. And it mm -hmm. took them a year to decide whether or not they're going to re-sign me back to their label. Or whether or not I want to re-sign back to the label. So I just wait out the four years. And I've, as them finish, I was like, one of the brothers, here I come. So one of the brothers start treat me like a king, you know. Mm -hmm. Give me the house. Give me the car. Give me the cell phone. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And... The most important thing, got a studio, recording studio. Big old recording studio, big 32 track, big board, and 24 track, real to real. Boom, set it up in my house and, you know, start doing my work. Couldn't see eye to eye with them either after about a year. Mm. These people just feel like they can just walk in your life. I don't know them from Spanish town, Mandible or Ocherius. Mm -hmm. And them just feel like they can walk in your life because them cut you a nice check or them cut you a nice this and feel like them can tell you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not that guy. I am not that guy. You know? You can tell me all you want to tell me. But it's up to me to decide whether or not I want to deal with what you say. For sure. I'm not the kind of person that you can just come in and walk in my life and cut me a check and then tell me what to do afterwards. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I don't... Put it this way. 80% of the industry I don't like. 20% I love. 20% mm -hmm. of the industry I love. You know? But the opportunities that I got signing with a record company is one of the greatest opportunities that anybody can get in this business. Mm -hmm. The people you meet in this business are some of the people, them are some of your idol, them. One of my greatest moments in this business, in this industry, mm -hmm. is when I met the Purple King himself, Prince. That's the moment I will cherish from now because he has been one of my idols. He has been one of the greatest performer in my eyes. One of the greatest musicians in my eyes. I, I, this brother inspired me from mm -hmm. east to west as mm -hmm. far as it, from each other. Seeing? 
and I get to meet him and talk to him personally, sit down one on one with him backstage at his at his club. He have a club named Grand Slam in LA. Mm-hmm. And I get to meet him. And right before I, I went in there to it was an official meeting them set up between me and him because they know how I feel about him and blah blah blah. Okay. And the company because this was Warner Brothers at the time and he was signed to the company too. God. And before I go in there there was a little guy or a girl or whoever she was. I don't know who she was, but she started giving me a bunch of, she gave me about 40 rules. Mm-hmm. But the two I remember is do not reach out to touch his hand. Do not touch him. Do not hug him. Do not, do not. The only thing she never tell me for do is don't kiss him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to look on her like, hmm, cool. Because see, what they don't realize is Princess of Gemini, 15th of June. Mm. I'm a Gemini, 14th of June. So you understand him. You only see the side of us that we want you to see. Mm-hmm. So the minute she start telling me about what he don't want you to do, I realize that, hmm, him trick you too. <laughs> so I just trick her too. I was like, okay, man, cool. Mm-hmm. And I walk in. And the minute I walk in, him look for me and I look for him and him give me that. Him give me the... We call it the grin. He give mm-hmm. me this. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do it to myself. I'm like, <laughs> you know, when we laugh at people, you know. And mm-hmm. as I walk in, like two chair, two tables away from him, him get up, mm-hmm. stand up, come out from the table, walk towards me and extend him hand. Mm-hmm. Grab me and we embrace. Yeah. And I was like, damn, the first thing the woman tell me not to do is wear him do. You know what I'm saying? I was like, mm-hmm. okay. So you trick her too, huh? And him just start <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and we sit on and him laugh about a good 10 seconds. Then we start talking, say, yo, where you from, man? Eh? I was like, oh, Jamaica. So him say, where in Jamaica are you from? So, so I was like, oh, I'm from Spanish Town, live a Montego Bay. He say, I've been there. You've been to Jamaica? I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I've been to Jamaica, but I've been to Ochos Rios. So I start laughing. I say, no name Ochos Rios, man. Because so, I'm talking to him in Jamaica now. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to him like, you know. But because you know you're normal now. You don't have to give him exactly. the. Exactly. He gets it. So I say, it's near Ochos Rios, man. We just call it Ochi. He said, yeah, I heard that. And we just, we just start talk. So at the end of the conversation, Virgin, after about 20 minutes, it might late for go up on stage. Mm-hmm. See, it was late about five minutes ago up on the stage because he was performing that night. Mm-hmm. I said to him, say, um, you know, I'm getting ready to sign to, to one of brothers. So I'm start laughing and go like, <laughs> for real? Mm-hmm. So I say, yeah, I heard that. Um, I'm going to say, advice. <laughs> so he, just, he went like this. I start getting on him and go like, keep your masters. Mm. Own your masters. Don't ever give them your masters. Keep your masters. And I look at him like him just says something in Spanish. Because mm-hmm. I've never heard the word master before in my life. Mm. I don't, I never know what a master was. Mm-hmm. Up until this point right Up here. Up until that point. Mm. And meeting done, respect, nice meeting your brother and him say, good luck. And I'm gone about the business. I'm going to walk back to my crew. I'm going to say to my lady, so I'm say, tell me something. What's a master? Mm. And she started laughing. She said, he tell you that. Ish too, right? Some say, yeah, him tell me to make sure I keep my masters. Mm-hmm. You know? And she started explaining to me what a master was. And I'm from that day until to the day, nobody touched my masters. I own every master from that day until to the day. That's why. You understand me? I got that advice from him as a businessman. Mm-hmm. You know, because for years we know the we know the battle that him got through trying to mm-hmm. get back his master. And him, and him just get it after him demise. You know what I'm saying? Them just get back all that master after this man demise. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the things you learn in the business. As the business along the way, mm-hmm. 
It's very, very important to even you as an artist, because a lot of us don't really see the business. We see the industry. Mm -hmm. It's the industry that brings us to our knees a lot of times. You know, and I learned that the hard way. I learned that I've seen, I've seen brethren that I used to roll with in LA. You know what I'm saying? I seen brethren that I'm rolling around, you know, in the same circle. But if it's a big up Snoop Dogg for them vibe there, big up my brethren them over there for them vibe there, you know, big up, you know, ease for them vibe there, brethren. But the truth is, I've seen bridging over there, like rich, rich bridging, boom, industry money, you know, and it just go by the wayside. Like the things that we pay attention to mm -hmm. and the things them that we worship and hug up and glorify, they're props. Mm -hmm. We respect the props more than we respect the real deal. You it's, know, a, it's a distraction. It's yeah. all... That's what it's there the for. Things that will come, the things that will come for free, you probably have to worry about paying for them later on. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones you worry about, that's not the ones, the ones you have to buy. The yeah. ones that they're giving to you, that's what you got to worry about. That's the ones you have to worry about, my brother. <laughs> so what do you say from that meeting with Prince? Yeah. From that day, that's when you learned the business or you were getting a bit of it before that, or that, that was the day? That was one of the moments. This, what, that was one of the moments when I actually start saying, you know what? Mm -hmm. I have to learn the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs, mm -hmm. the back and the front. I have to learn everything about this business, everything that I can possibly learn and use. Because mm -hmm. you can't learn everything about the one subject. For sure. You know, so I have to learn all of the important things about this business. What the hell is a master? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So from that moment on, I start inquiring. I start studying. I start, I went to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, when me and Warner Brothers, them couldn't get along, I just pack up my old studio, put it in a U-Haul truck and go, Las Vegas from California, from LA. Drive to Las Vegas and set up shop over there. You know, start working with basically everybody, hip-hop, reggae, everybody. You so know, you were as as producer or as engineer or writer? Or producer, artist. engineer, writer, musician, everything. See, Who were some of the names you worked with back then when you got to Vegas? Holy pop people, I can't remember. Put it this way, my brethren. Mm -hmm. I, would have more, I would have more remember the people who I didn't want to work with mm -hmm. and never get to work with. But I've worked with basically, you, you name them Rastaman. You name them. I've worked with them. You know, I work around them, bonify bridge with them, party with them. One of my one of my, put it this way, one of my party bridges, one of my bridges was a party with probably every night for like a month straight was Dennis Radman. <laughs> was <Brad> <laughs> Yeah. One, of the, one of the funnest virgin brother. I've never seen that virgin and I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in it, in it, in it. You know, in I make a lot of business, it. man. I, I become I even become a gambler, virgin. Put mm -hmm. it this way. I become a, a casino king, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so put it this way, my brother. You can get caught up in the industry. You can For get sure. caught up because it's fun. It's it's yeah. a whole lot of fun, Bridget. It's a whole but lot I of fun. I think that's the problem there. They give mm. you the fun, mm. so you almost forget the business. Yeah. Fools. Don't don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Fools will forget your business with their business. Fools will. Mm -hmm. You know, sensible people don't. Because I, I know so much sensible people in this business, Bridget. Mm -hmm. You know, I've known so, I know so many sensible people in the business. But one thing I notice, the sensible ones don't get the prop, don't get the hype. No, no. It's the dummy them get the hype, brother. Because you understand? You remember, this, the people that a lot of people <laughs> that really know the business, you don't even see them. You have no clue who that, they that really are. That is true, are. too. That is yeah, true, man. too. Mm -hmm. That is true too, my brethren. These people are basically. You ever heard of a rapper called Chameleon? Here? Yeah, for sure. All right. People don't understand that. That's one of the greatest businessmen, probably next to Master P in this business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that. Mm -hmm. I know the stuff that this brethren use hip hop money, use rap money, use record company money, and invest in so much things. Mm -hmm. 
You know, them them man they probably have all two, three hundred workers, people who work for them. Chameleon here. Yeah. <laughs> you hear a name? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hype name. So yeah. you have to do us out of bridge. Um, we don't hear about him like we hear about the, mm. the two packs and the this and the that and the we don't hear about them man like we hear about certain people. You know what I mean? We, we don't hear about them man like like certain people. Don't those names don't ring a bell to a lot of hip hop fans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or to not even hip hop fans. Because if you're a hip hop fan, you ain't know about community. Mm -hmm. But those names don't ring a bell to a lot of the average people mm -hmm. who's just outside of that core, core circle. Then probably hear about the puffy them and them hear about the this and the that and the that. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. truth is, Bridget, the people and the sensible people in this business. And I kind of, I kind of, it's it kind of hard to explain why. Mm -hmm. You know, and you want ex, you want to find out you want, you want to publicly say why in God's name mm -hmm. the sense of a people them in this business never get the hype. Mm -hmm. Why? It's it's the business because if all the sensible people got the hype, the yeah. business would implode on itself. You understand? You need the people that don't get it. Well, no, no they're, they're part of the engine of this business right here. You know, it, it's too much idiot in this in the industry, brother. It's too much idiot in this business. It's too it's, much idiot in this industry. They're not in the business, to be honest with you. They're in the industry. Because that is why that is what pull the wool over, over most of us are in the first place. The industry, mm -hmm. the lifestyle. Not the business of how you get that for real, for real. Exactly. That is the issue. And if 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 most of the people in this in this in this business, yeah, are even in the industry, can just Slip out of the slip out of the slumber there for a minute, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, even even with the reggae industry, Bridget, even at the reggae industry, I've heard and I've seen and I've talked to so much idiots, Bridget. So you just want to look on a man straight in the face and say, "Let me ask something. You have any sense? Hmm. You have no sense in your head, rude boy. You think I really saw you? You just get up every day and burn a fire upon this and burn a fire upon that and don't realize what what what, what you're putting yourself through. Because nobody now put you through it, you know. Mm -hmm. You're putting yourself through it. People think that that, that there's an office that all of these so-called gatekeeper get up and go each day and say, let's um let's figure out how we can rob these people. No, nobody do that. You're doing it to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're doing it to yourself, brother. You know, we're doing it to ourselves, Bridget. Where is where is the 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 walk of fame for reggae? Mm -hmm. Where is the Hall of Fame for reggae? Where is the museum in Jamaica for reggae? Where is it? Mm -hmm. But we have so much gatekeeper for it. So come all of these gatekeeper is not that slick. It but it takes, it takes organization and it takes a team of people with the vision to know, okay, it's not going to happen today. It might happen 10 years from now, but we have to start today yep. for 10, for 10 years down the road. Yep. 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 But you see, there are people in Jamaica who know this, you know, mm -hmm. there are people in Jamaica who know this there, but sometimes it's hard for work with the artist. I'm going to be honest with you because I know it was hard to work with me mm -hmm. and I have a little sense in my head Fair sometimes enough. seeing, and it was very hard to work with me. Why, why would you say that? Why was it so difficult to work with you back then? Because musically, I thought I knew what I wanted musically. Mm -hmm. Business-wise, I thought I, kn I know that I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted was, if you're going to give me a check, give me a check that I can invest it. Don't give me a check that I can go buy a chain or go buy some clothes or go buy a car. Mm -hmm. Give me a check that I can invest into something that can turn. That's what that's what I was about. So if you're not giving me a check that I can invest, especially when you when you sign in your when you sign in away a chunk of your work. Mm -hmm. Like I signed a, a, a publishing deal in Jamaica. And when I signed that publishing deal with the company, they gave me a fat check. Mm -hmm. And that fat check is responsible for about two to three other rooms on my house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have to say big up, big up, big up to my publisher in Jamaica. But that check, you know, but at the end of the day, it was a trick contract because I was, I was signed for life. There was a word in it called perpetuity that I did not know. Listen, you see, that so was here. I was signed. I, was, I signed that contract for life and didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I still have that miss, 
guided foolishness up until today. That's one of the pimple them by my face. That's what like you know when you get a cut and uh, mm -hmm. the cut get better but the wound is still <laughs> you can't mm -hmm. see the chop in the head. See how yeah. But you <laughs> had to learn. That's why even somebody like you, I know you have such a vast catalog of music. Mm -hmm. It seems like you love the industry and you don't mind experimenting with music, putting it out because you just never know where it goes. It doesn't have to be a number one hit. So true. So true. Somebody else might pick it up so true. five years from now, put it in a movie, and that's the meal ticket right so there. So true. So Continue true. Continue to create. That's so true. That's so true. You, you have to think, when it comes to production, when it comes to your music, you have to think, you have to think further than the corner store. You have to think further than, 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 your, than your hangout spot, your eyeglass rest. You have to think further than, than, than your block. Mm -hmm. Put it that way, you know. Yeah, you can big up your black. The other day, I'm singing a, a, a true, you know, 31 St. John's Road to come from blah 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 blah. But then again, you have to step out of that and go put out a tune, you know, where you know, let's party all night long because for, from now until a hundred, sorry about that, a hundred and fifty years from now, people is going to party, mm -hmm. you know. Nobody ever gonna know is which by 31 St. John's Road, the brother. Mm -hmm. If 31 St. Andrews still exists, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to think outside the box. You have to think outside of, you know, put it this way. You have to think with a check there. Mm -hmm. You have to think how with an investment it. there. Uh, how yeah. to get it. Exactly. How am I going to get this? You know what I mean? Because even when it came to, because I said, I know you like to experiment and do a lot of stuff. I know one of your last albums you had put out was mm -hmm. a gospel inspirational album. Yeah, well... <laughs> All if I right. tell you something, that's one of my biggest earners. That right there. That album earned more than the knocking on even door concert. What? That album earned more than all of these foolishness. It's one of my mm -hmm. biggest earners, Bridget. But you see, that goes mm -hmm. back to, to what I say. Just put it, it's in it's in you. Just put it out and you never know. I'm pretty sure so, you knew, okay, putting it out, you wanted to do something, but I'm pretty sure you didn't think this would have been that big one as a matter of fact i did that album outside of outside of even thinking about it it's a bridge in the mind doing big up yourself every time a bridge that bridge in the mind carry all of those tracks to me because even him have him little student them house and him experimenting with him sound and blah 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 and he come up with all of those tracks or the idea of the tracks and come mm -hmm. to me and say yo ed one do our project you know but me not a singer mm -hmm. And I, I would appreciate it if you could help me out with this project. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, we have, we have. And then play it, I'm going like, hmm, like that, but I'm gonna like the kick drum. Like that, but I'm gonna like the bass. Like that, but I'm gonna like the piano. And him say, Ed, I'll give them to you. You drop them into your system. And you change what you want to change and just do what you want. So I wrote every one of those lyrics to them songs, but most of the music ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I changed some of the drum them, I changed some of the piano, changed some of the bass lines, but that was his idea, Virgin. That was his idea, and him come to me with it, and I was like, whoa. And boom, we put it out. And the rest is history, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to give thanks more time when you with people with ideas. When you see, put it this way, Virgin. We have a little saying that Jamaica back in them days. I don't say I have him still long, but so we know we know we know kill champion, we raise them. For sure. You understand? We might beat them more time, you know, but we not kill them. We we raise champion, Virgin. You know? Mm -hmm. The mentality is nowadays people just are destroy champions. You know, pe them, them, them just are destroyed the champion because I don't know if you hear what's coming out of Jamaica these days. Mm -hmm. Some great talent. It's a little youth. The other day we put out a tune. Love him, love. As a matter of fact, I want to put this out in the era. I love to do a tune with him. Mm -hmm. A little youth named World, World Boss. Uh, not World Boss. Um, when, when, when name? Nation Boss. Yes, yes. Him do a tune near humans. Mm hmm. Tune hit me like a, a M50 bullet, brother. Straight through. Wap. Because you can myself, understand word myself, for word what oh, it is. Understand what I say word for word, my brother. If you don't understand that song, mm -hmm. see him? And we hear him do some other little work. Yeah, you know. Yeah, him the pan him like a trap thing. You know, we understand where I come from. But we understand what he's saying. Totally mm -hmm. love him vibe. Mm -hmm. You know. But truth is... We're not raising people like those. Those kind of champions, we're not raising them. Mm -hmm. If you notice the other kind of champion where they are raised down there, sir. All of these kids are champions. Every last one of them, they're champions, Bridget. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But more time, you have to train the champion there. You know, and with a with a love of the man, him could have just take some training more time because the truth but is that's what it is. The truth is, I know all of us can take training because I couldn't take training either. Mm-hmm. You know. So then I guess that's why it's easier for you to yeah. put yourself into certain artist it, shoes exactly. nowadays. Because exactly. you knew what was in your mind and you knew that exactly. what you were willing to do and not willing to do. Exactly. Cause sometimes some things are better left unsaid. Mm. Some things are better left unsaid. Mm-hmm. Somebody, you see, when you have an artist coming up and your artist I go up an interview, even now, mm-hmm. I'm a grown, experienced artist who can conduct myself, and I know exactly how to conduct myself. I am with a team that mm-hmm. will say to me, if I'm asking you this question, go around it. Don't answer those questions. Mm-hmm. Because some questions some answers will create more enemies for you create more animosity not even enemy car mm-hmm. enemy nowadays uh, we don't know about that mm-hmm. man. you know but the animosity that mm-hmm. it might create and it might build up resistance you know in a certain marketplace mm-hmm. because every aspect of this thing here is a marketplace for sure so if I if I interview I ask you certain questions, slip around it. Mm-hmm. And we a lot of these kids don't have nobody to groom them. They don't have no publicist, they don't have no manager, because the manager with their own them, them probably older than the manager. Them look a bridging where them and them are role. That's fine. But mm-hmm. you and you look a bridging where you and them are role. Can't manage you. You don't know nothing about business, you never study that. It's the it's the advent of the internet where now it's direct to consumer where I don't really have to speak to any but my fans alone. Mm. That's a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes it's you the need worst a thing. Filter. It's the worst I, thing. I wouldn't say worse because if it wasn't for the internet, all these wonderful things we've been doing for the past fifteen, almost twenty years now, mm. we probably wouldn't be able to do it. But it comes with a price also too. People like you could do it. People like you could do it because. People like me could do it because we're a little bit more aware of what can show you. Mm-hmm. I've seen interview where you have great interviewers, mm-hmm. but they steer the conversation into the controversy mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it it brings them more. It brings them more where you more of views, views, more clicks, eh? more likes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are doing it for the likes, you know, they now do it for the love. And them not do it for the money. Them not do it for the likes. I mean, likes bring you money. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. you know, truth is, a lot of people doing it with ulterior motive. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're not doing it for the culture. You know, like Alba Rose, they said, we're doing it for the culture. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's one of the biggest problems in this business, my virgin. It's like, people know what they're doing. People like you know what you're doing. I've, I've heard a lot of good, great interviewers. Mr. Some kids at Jamaica where I do them thing, love what them I do. But when them do it, them do it with tricks. They, you know, them do it with tricks. I seen somebody, I interview a lady the other day, you know, a little lady named, um, name, 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 I forget what she named now, but the way the, way the version I bring around the conversation, I slip it around, slip it around, slip it around, and bring it right where I want it. Like, right where it will create a controversy. Mm-hmm. Because he knows exactly how she feel about that, that subject. So I bring it around for, for, for the controversy to start, you know? <laughs> because that's what them claims themselves. But I tell people this, especially mm-hmm. whenever I speak to people, I say, listen, I'm not into pasta pasta. We're going to have a conversation, you know. Certain things are going to come out. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Intention oh, of yeah. this conversation. Oh, yeah. You understand? Oh, yeah. But you can sometimes when you intentionally do it, people realize and recognize that, you know, but the dumbest them don't. So I, them, them just dump, them jump on the the highlights, you know, you know, I don't feel we're seeing an interview yet where you have a great interview, but the interview I got through, it got through good. I'm fine. One little, one little foolish, you know, like peace and just cut that. And that's what I'm using as him, as him beat. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and but I guess them catching fish, so <laughs> Easy. listen. This conversation, the thing with it, I, I knew going into this conversation that we'll be talking about music and stuff like that. But what I really wanted to get out of you yeah. was the business, and that's what really spoke about, and that's yeah, what I really enjoyed coming from somebody like you that's seen so many different levels of it. You know what I mean? Mm. This is, I got two more questions for you. You've had this career from 80s come right up until right now. When would you say has been the highest point of your career thus far and the lowest point of your career thus far? I don't, I'm never really have a low point. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I would consider a low point where so, things just not happen for you. Mm-hmm. You know, business not coming in. That's, to me, that's a low point. I never really had that. Mm-hmm. Because the minute, the minute I I walk away from the singing thing and the recording with people thing, I went right into my studio. I, I set up my studio. I set up my radio station. I had a radio station in New York. I came, to, I left that up there, you know, and and I come to Florida and I set up another radio station. We have Reggae Global rec- um, Radio right now down here that mm-hmm. we're running. I'm on it every Wednesday and Thursday. So I, I wouldn't consider myself with any low low point. Low point for people who's not hearing from me because I'm in the studio, I'm building studios. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not hearing from me, they're not hearing a tune, but I'm setting up to do all of that. Mm-hmm. So when you don't hear from me for 10 years, it's not a low point for me. It's a point where I'm probably opening another business outside of, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I never, I've never had a low point in this business. Mm-hmm. Never had a low point. Not even during the 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 the, the disease thing. You know, any the, the virus. Not never had a low point. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Because I'm a hermit when it comes to when it comes to my my work. I'm a hermit. Mm-hmm. The more time I spend alone, is that's like Christmas to me. It's the more creative you can exactly. get with your own thoughts. You, you know, I will lock up in the studio for a week, brethren. Mm-hmm. Only thing I want is just push some food under the bottom of the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't need a shower. Uh, yeah. yeah, we go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. <laughs> go take a one dump, come back in and work, 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 work. I stayed in the studio for the last probably four days. Mm-hmm. And we are talking about seven songs. Mm-hmm. You understand me? It's like, we're, we're just, we're just a knockout songs without <laughs> even leaving the room. That's yeah, a space we're, 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 right now. Huh? That's the space that we're in right now where exactly. you're creating everything there. But I used, to do, I used to do it before. Even before the pandemic, I was in New York because I came down here right when the pandemic just, just mm-hmm. started. You know, I made my transition to Florida just when the pandemic just started. But mm-hmm. even New York, I used to lock up in the studio for days, Bridget. I have a couch in the back like you see me have right so now. Mm-hmm. Where when my deadly want to sleep, I just pull it out and just drop. Boom, boom, boom. Me and my pillow and my blanket them in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to sleep there so... The only time I get up with the last two days to go take care of some business outside of our go on. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Outside, outside of the student environment, I go take care of some other business. But as I drop back in there, shirt off, boom, work. Work. You okay, understand? so you say didn't really have any luck. Never what ever. What you say was the mm-hmm. highest so far then? I have a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. One of my high points was touring Peru. Hmm. Reggae Sun Splash South America. Okay. That tour was a major high point for me. I learned how to manipulate crowd of uh, 70, 80,000 people. I learned how to manipulate crowd. We're having probably 80% of them doing exactly what you tell them to do. Mm-hmm. And there's no greater feelings than when you have... You know, now I know the president and the prime ministers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a mic in a year and you stand up and you go, say, yo, no, put up on the hand. And you see 80% of the people, you know, you're going to have a 20% who don't mm-hmm. like a bone in your body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> them don't like how you look, them don't like how you dress, them don't like how you sound. So them now make no move for you. See? But when you see 80% of people put up the man in a crowd of 100,000, you go like, whoa. My next high point was Germany. In a in a in a state in Germany called Berlin. Mm-hmm. Did a show there, and probably 99% of those people couldn't wait. They can't get enough of you. You know what I'm saying? And 
people singing along with you word for word. I probably didn't sing 20% of that song. It's them I sing the song. I let me have the mic. I'm a moment. I can't hear myself. It's just them I sing it. Mm -hmm. You know, those are high points. One of my high points was meeting Prince. For sure. That, that, that's, that's right up there in the top one, uh, one, two, three. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the truth is, I've had, I've had so many high points, Bridget. You know, some of my high points in this business is to watch people like Aishana go through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Go through, do our thing. I mean, yeah, you know, she have a little buck tour with people because people did it. Not, mm -hmm. not, you know, she does whatever. But truth is, I was the first one who put Aishana in a recording studio in New York. Okay. One of my high points is to watch Jack Cure went through. Mm -hmm. First person to put him in a recording studio. Because uh, uh, Mobe said? Yeah. Of course, because that's where he was originally and before exactly. he came. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One of my high points is to watch Richie Stephen go through. Proud of him. Mm -hmm. Richie Stephen, I used to call him a son. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So I've had so many high points in this in this thing, my brother. One of my high points is to give Leroy Gibbon when I'm first big when I'm first big tune. You understand me? People remember who Leroy Gibbon is. Of one hundred percent, this magic moment and all. This of magic, one. right? Give him when I'm first big tune. The power of love is a song called the power of love. That right? was you. That was me. You know, have so many high points, brethren. You know what I mean? So put it this way, Bridget. I have started, I am instrumental for a lot of companies to start behind what I start to do for them and present them with work. Mark the records, mark the TV. Pick up your damn self, Mr. Mark. <laughs> See? You know what I mean? First time them, he have a product in him hand for walk into a company named Ichiban in Atlanta and sign his, these two artists. Mm. I finish up the record, finish up the album, give it to him and him go sign the artist them and get him deal and start him big company. You know, lifelong records. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With Byron Murray. Mm -hmm. Proud of that bridging. Do him do. Yeah, we know buck two along the line. We know how life turn. Business, you know. I tell people this. If you've been in this business for more than 10 years, there's mm -hmm. something that you did along the way that somebody in the business is not going to agree with. That's just the nature of the business. Everybody going to like it. Everybody going to agree with your Rasta, man. You know what I'm saying? So put it this way. We don't even too care about people agreeing or people disagreeing, mm -hmm. you know, because age will teach you way better than that. You aging, you be, being a young person, Mm -hmm. More time we think we're invincible. That's why so much young people are dead foolishly, you know, because we think say you can jump from that building to the next one day. And That's not gonna happen to me. Until it happens. To yeah, man. But when you reach when you reach certain age in, the, in this business, I'm a brother, the minute you start step over 40 years old, if you if you don't learn something from it, you don't have a sense. You'll never ever learn anything again. At all. You know what I'm saying? You will never learn anything again, brother. If you if you go into this business and you, and you pass 40. Mm -hmm. Not even Bob Marley passed 40. Now, when if people realize that, brother. That's so crazy. Not even Bob Marley passed 40, you know, brother. Mm -hmm. Seeing man dead right now, the midline prime, probably at the beginning I'm prime. At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? So it's sad. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have, to, we, we, we have to figure it out, my brother. We have to figure it out. But the thing is, I would have loved to see some people who figure it out, start teaching the people them who not figure it out yet. I would appreciate that. You know, or I, not even teach them. Start doing things for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Start doing things. Get involved with, 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 with what you're seeing there. It's like, oh, you have, you have to give respect to Aboriginal name specialists, you know. I don't know if you... Mm -hmm. Of course. You give Spection, of course. Yeah, man. Specialist. I don't, even, I don't know about the Spection thing. That Spection is a label mm -hmm. that him used to control, you know. But don't know much about it because that is way after my time mm -hmm. around them, man. But Specialist... But he had the first label before that in Mobile, which was... um, Was it Champion was the label? Uh, forget to name you know. Yeah, but there was one before. Goal, something, goal, something, whatever. Mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. 
I don't remember, but Moby a youth, you know? Mm -hmm. But I forgive respect to them because we see him rise from zero to a hundred in about three seconds, you know? So we love them thing the original and we see the man rise to the to the level where, you know, even me, they didn't want to manage me at one time, but I couldn't be managed. So I'm about to run up in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at one stage, I was about to go like, yo, spec, mm -hmm. specialist, I, I love some management to what I do, you know, because what I do, I know, so I have my thing locked, you know, but after a while, I'm rest, you know, me, me and this bridge never fall out. So we still remain friends until today, but I'm never really alone. I'm like, yeah, leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? So bona fide bridge, I have to say big respect to this man because we see him go from, like I said, from zero to a hundred in about three seconds. I have to respect that, brother, because and every man can do them things and his legacy. It's there to show for him right now. Big up woman, see him wait up, you know what I mean? Crazy. Yeah. Over yep. decades, you you could do the same thing we did in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. Twenty years later, that's amazing, boss. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? We see, the, we see the fruits of the man labor. I shine up, guys. I mean, there's so much, there's so much proof to it, Bridget, mm -hmm. that it can be done. You can move from zero to a hundred. You know that three second thing, the brother. You, get you know it. what I'm saying? Press gas, not it. Mm. Tune like up your engine and press gas. You know, so just keep listen, man. Just keep doing what you do, Bridget. Just keep doing what you do. 20 That's years it. from now, you're like, whoa. You know, what about, what about we probably not be around to see it, but who cares, Bridget? Somebody will be. Somebody okay. will be around. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, who cares? That's, the, that's the beauty of life, you know. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteed for ban. Mm -hmm. You have the dash. Mm -hmm. That's your life. It's how you live it. Mm hmm it's all you, all you deal with that your life. And then guess what? You guarantee for dead. For your born, you're doomed. You know? Remember, from the second you take your first breath, you're, you're on your way to taking your last breath, you know, boss. Yeah, man, you're doomed, man. You're doomed. <laughs> 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 guarantee for dead. <laughs> you know, so that's the last thing you want to worry about in your life, brother. Mm -hmm. that, that dash there. You see that dash there? It's called life. Mm -hmm. Now, what you do with that dash is what determine your legacy. What your legacy gonna gonna feel like? What your kids are all your kids are gonna feel about you when at the end of it and when you go, your kids are gonna like my father <laughs> or my brother. Oh, my brother was a bum man. Get man to get too much opportunity and just mess it up because of drugs because of dumb. So sad. Because our fancy life, party, they, 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 they. come on, man. Come on, Virgin. I mean, we, 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 need, we need the man to start thinking upon a level where nothing no more important than your life and your legacy, Rasta. That's it. That's all we have, you know, is your legacy. You're 100% right. That's all we have, my brother. Stay out of the melee, man. Stay out of them fancy life, man. Stay out of it, brother. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? Lock up the house and make music, man. And put it out there in the world because you just never know. It's never. easy. I can see us right now. Record a tune. Mm -hmm. Mix it. Master it. Upon the same computer and put it out to the world upon Spotify and iTunes and everything and sit back and watch it. Mm -hmm. Blaze up your, your peer pal. Mm. As easy as that. You don't yeah, need yeah. none of these people. You don't need the industry. Mm -hmm. I feel like today felt like a real master class in music. Because yeah. I heard you somewhere say, listen, I will lead you through the forest, but I'm not going to hold your hand. You understand? No, I will no man and brother. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm phobic. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not holding no guy and I'm not holding no girl hand. Everybody has to stand up on their own two feet. You understand me? I'll tell you. But I'm not going to... I will tell you, gonna... listen, this game is to be sold, not told. You understand. You understand me? If you if you figure out the pimp, a pimp's mentality or a pimp blueprint. I live in Vegas for seven years, so I know the pimp blueprint. If a man can get 15, 20, 25 women to go out on the street, go through abuse... Go through all kind of nastiness in them life. Mm -hmm. Make money from it and then bring back that money and give every dollar to her pimp. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Everything else in the world is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, on that note there, on that exact <laughs> note, the floor is yours right now. If there's any big up you want to say, leave any contact information. Oh, oh leave right my big up, my brother. First of all, I'm firm. So I have to say big up to management. Mm -hmm. Saying big up to publish publishing company. Big up to my publicist. Saying Miss Joanna Marie, your respect taller than you. Mm -hmm. we know you are bad line. <laughs> short stop. You know, we call her the short boss. See? <laughs> but it's not weird. So we have to say big up to Miss Joanna Marie every time, Virgin. Mm -hmm. See? We have to say big up to Rex Entertainment. See? Miss Wendy, Sir Robert, big up on a damn self over there in Europe. See? We soon see her. You see? So I see there. Big up to Reggae Global. Radio, Reggae Global Entertainment, Mr. Marlon Burrell, Kevin Stu, seeing everybody we involved in the company, Bridging Millie, with CEO, Melissa, big up a damn self every time. You see me? So that's what we're there in terms of all I will look a big up. I want to say big up, big up, big up, large up, large up, large up to Mr. Kashif Linda, Mr. Willie Linda, Heavy Beat Records. Maximum respect. We're coming after you this year. Number one spot. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems like in Florida, you guys have your own ecosystem your own vibe everything going on in there because it when you came to the states yeah. first it was everything was new york and then everything kind of went from new york to atlanta to yeah. florida so then that's the trifecta in america right now but florida especially has its own ecosystem florida is a florida. mecca has been a mecca for reggae music because i want to tell you something a lot of people won't own up to it because we know that stigma there seeing mm -hmm. oh artists deliver foreign a lot of people own up to it, but I don't know one reggae artist that is anybody that, that have a visa, have a green card, or have a citizenship mm -hmm. that don't either born here so or live here so. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody lives here, Bridget. Mm -hmm. See, you go to Jamaica right now, probably the most artists you can find on the one when I have no visa or when I have no interest in living a far. Mm -hmm. See, but everybody lives here from Orlando, come right back down to Miami. Mm -hmm. From the biggest to the most normal. You'll be surprised who's You'll be there. surprised, Bridget, who lives here. You understand? Because <laughs> Florida is basically Jamaica. I call Florida the Montego Bay of America. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because it reminds me so much of Moby. I live five minutes from the beach. Mm -hmm. I don't even drive to the beach, my brother. Mm -hmm. I walk to the beach with my towel on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? so put it this way, my brethren. It's the place to live, and in my case, in most artists' case, mm -hmm. you don't have to have that bunch of hangarons around you. You don't have to have that mo that, that that everybody putting out them onto you, except for the bomb them on the corner where you know beg everybody. I know just you alone them a beg, so they not target you. Them beg everybody, you know, or them sell your flowers or. Some, you know, but truth is, you don't have that annoyance. Yeah. Where as you stop somebody who want to clean your windshield, you know, because, oh God, them have to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you have to wind on, we have to give them money and, you know, you don't have them, them kind of annoyance because the truth is you can't beat up these people for the better them do that more than a rub and teeth. And a for sure. You know what I'm saying? But to us, sometimes them think there's annoyance, you know. So we don't have those things. So Florida is a mecca bridging. You're free. You want to buy a you want to buy a, 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 a hundred and fifty trap mixing board. You want to buy a SSL. You walk up at the store. You know, and you go do your deal and you come back and within two days you're boarding in your studio. You want to go buy a machine. You walk up at the store, you don't have to pay an importation fee for it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to import it into a country where, where you as an artist, people know you're you bringing something. You either have to go palm a guy or you have to go pay feet of customs. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You name me one country that you leave from your son of the Caribbean and you're bringing a whole industry for start, an industry where make people make money and make people better off. And they're going to charge you from, I don't like you're bringing a, a fancy car or a, or a Luxury car, you know what I'm saying? We understand that. But you are bringing an industry and you have to 
pay for all them things. The musician have to pay for keyboard at the airport. No, man. So, somebody's supposed to get a roundhouse box for that. And anybody make them rule them. And a roundhouse box, if you get in the office, brother. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Crazy. Who are, who are bringing fatties with them big and the fucking box here, brother? Come on, man. Stop, man. <laughs> Listen, I've gotten you. We've been in business mode for a minute. Now I need you to go back into artist mode because before I get you out of here, what yeah. I'm going to ask you for is Heaven's Door, a muscle special before we go. Most special. <laughs> Heaven's do it. I heard him say, Mama, take this badge off of me. Cause I feel I'm a knocking on heaven's door. Muscle I make them knock, knock, knocking on them coffin door. Yeah. Muscle I make them knock, knock, knocking on them coffin door. Now, now, yeah. Say if a rude boy at this, it better not miss a step across. Big man muscle bada. If a rude boy done this, yo, yo, it cha. Sure. Later on, later on, I'm bleeding, but I'm empty. <laughs> Listen. Don't bring me back to the streets in the muscle. <laughs> I enjoy the streets the a little bit too much back in the days, you know. <laughs> That's why you were the roughneck, you understand? You are yeah, man, at one stage, we know it was known as Ed Roughneck Robinson. Mm-hmm. But we shed them stigma the bridge, you know what I mean? You can't live your life like that every day, you you know what I'm saying? So you have to share it real quick. Boss, you excellent, know. epic, very insightful conversation. You understand? Give thanks. Give thanks, Bridget. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Let me give you an outro and get you out here because this one. Was yeah, I got to run. I have to drive to Miami. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And yes, we sir. are out. Give thanks, Bridget. Big up a damn self every time. Maximum up, up, respect. Up. Guns out. <laughs> See? Yes, Give I again. I love my brother. Aye. Give thanks. Give thanks. Big up. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com. <laughs>